Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County work session, Wednesday, December 18th, 2019. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, we have a, an agenda to approve. I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. I have a motion. Second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to approve the amendment as, as presented. All in favor, raise your hand, say yes. Yes. Both yes. say no. The yes have it. The motion is carried. Our first item is a presentation on student enrollment. Mr. Evans, thank you very much for being here this evening. Thank you. Good evening, board members. Dr. King. Good evening, Mr. Evans. So we're gonna, I'm going to talk about our student, student enrollment um, for, for this year as the September 30th account as well as uh, past enrollment. Uh, so I, thank you. Um, so this is the enrollment that's reported to, to MSDD by us and by our office and, and, and our numbers are going to be a little different than what we get paid for and I'll kind of uh, talk about that or clarify that and um, and also talk about some uh, we do track students that are homeschooled the state calls it home instruction but they're, they're homeschooled students where they're paired they're not enrolled in our schools and the, the parents are actually providing the instruction uh, we'll talk about some trends in the enrollment data get an understanding of that data and, and look at some of the trends in the uh, subgroups um, here is a grid. I, I put the uh, the totals in red. It just basically is a total by each grade for each school. Um, our, our, with our total number being 7790 uh, total enrollment from the county. Now, what I do want to note is we have a um, we have itinerant students. These are students that are also not enrolled in our school system, but do receive services. These are students. Typically, they're receiving speech services prior to the enrollment in school, but they are providing services, so we do track them and, and um, report those numbers to the state. Also, our three-year-olds in the pre s programs, that's at uh, specifically Ken Island Elementary School and Centerville Elementary School, and these students are, are receiving some, some um, qualified services. And again, they're not, um, not, we don't receive money for them, as well as the pre-K students are in this county as well. Um, just kind of an overall looking at the past 10 years, uh, you can see a little bit of a dip and then an increase, but really it's been pretty flat. It's been within with 100 students over the past 10 years. And my understanding is the projection is still going to be about the same going forward. Um, this is the same, the same numbers in five years, kind of broken down by, by each school, looking at, um, again, that total of 7790. Elementary school enrollment. One of the, the trends I've noticed in our uh, Churchill Elementary and Mattapique Elementary, that enrollment is decreasing. And even looking at Mattapique Middle, so that Mattapique district, in, the, in general, the enrollment's decreasing. Uh, and I, I don't have an answer for that right now, but it's certainly noticeable in the trend. Um, Mr. Evans, I have a question. <coughs> On the, um, the folks that are in if we have any involved in the um, um, virtual, virtual, are, do we count them as as our members now? But they are not included in September 30. Because it hasn't started yet. It, did, it has started, but we didn't get the okay from MSDE until after September 30. So they've started the program, but they are not in the enrollment for the school year. So we can't count Correct. them because they've. Well, it's been approved. Could we still count for them if it's Well, approved? we count them, but they, they look at your September 30 enrollment. So they weren't enrolled by September Correct. 30. Correct. How, how, oh, okay. how many students are they? 20. Okay. 20. 20. 20. Okay. Yeah, that September 30th is the magic date. That's where we're really... I just didn't know if they'd already been enrolled. But, but, in, but in reality, they were with us. Yes, yes. As they, of September 30th, they, they weren't counted, but when we discuss, we have a little enrollment. Really, we don't. We have added, if you add that 20 in there. Correct. But we aren't allowed, even though they were with us, we weren't, aren't allowed to conclude MSD them as MOE. MSDE was quite clear about that. Okay. And we've had students, I've been to all the schools this week, and 
we've had students enroll yeah, in the no, last no, two I'm, weeks. And, I was just, I'm just you know, thinking just, that they just how it already is. Been. No, they had, we got them on their way, but MSDE was very clear. And what's that, what, what group is that? That's Virtual Academy. Uh -huh. We have 20 students in the Virtual Academy K-8 program. So we weren't allowed to even start them until we got approval from MSDE. We did start them, and they knew that we were starting them, but they would not officially approve that it. it was after September 30. Okay. So they started there on their way, but not for September 30th. Next enrollment. year then? Yep, next year. And hopefully that will increase. Correct. That would be lovely. Before September 20th or 30th. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, any questions about elementary enrollment? Uh, again, as I had mentioned with the middle school enrollment, that Mattapique district, that enrollment is significantly decreasing for both the elementary and the middle school. Um, Stevensville, we're seeing, seeing an increase over the years, um, as well as Southernsville Middle, been kind of flat the last three. And then Centerville Middle for this year, we had a, had a slight increase as well. As far as high school enrollment, really in, in both high schools, the, the enrollment for the most part is slightly increasing each year. It goes a little bit of a decrease in Ken Island High School this year by just a couple students. Um, but for the most part, that is, is fairly um, flat enrollment, but slightly increasing. Oh. Do we track when students move elsewhere in the county or whether they move out of the county? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Ethnicity enrollment. Um, interestingly enough, the, the Asian population has been fairly flat. African American population decreasing as well as the, uh, the white population, where we're seeing the increase, and many probably do know this, is with the Hispanic population. Slight increase with students identified as multi race, but the, the, the um, data of significance here is certainly the Hispanic population is on an upwards trend, and that enrollment is increasing each year. Homeschooling. So this is pretty interesting. You'll see, um, you notice this year that there are, there's an increase in number of homeschooled students that we monitor. So if, if a student's being homeschooled, they have to notify us. And either they're being monitored by an umbrella group that has been uh, approved by MSDE or we monitor them. Uh, what has happened, and you'll see in the next slide, is when they changed the law for, <clears throat> for uh, compulsory attendance law that they must attend school through age 18 or up to age 18. A lot of our students that dropped out at age 16, you know, they couldn't do that anymore. And so some of those students we struggle with that, and their parents struggle with when, when they don't want to come to school or maybe they have anxiety issues, but they're not coming to school, they're not being successful, and we have to look for other alternatives for them. Um, I, as a people personnel worker in the, for the past three years, we have used that home instruction avenue, and a lot of these students are actually getting their GEDs and are, in fact, going on to community college, which is good. And these are our students with anxiety that, for, that really struggle walking in a brick-and-mortar building. Um, one example is we had a student who was in 10th grade last year, very bright student, high levels of anxiety, was attending a rise simply because it was a smaller setting. Um, and ultimately at the end of the year, notified us, his mother notified he was doing home instruction, and he passed the GED by August, career and college ready, and is enrolled and taking classes in Chesapeake now, two years ahead of his graduation cohort. So for some of these students, it is a, it, it's a good avenue, but we've had to use it also, like I said, when, when that law changed, when 16, 17 year olds still have to attend school, that's been a challenge for us. And you can see that that increase, really, you can point right to the high schools, 10th and 11th grade, and you know, some of these students that, um, years ago at 16 and 17 and some of them are already working you know and that was kind of their their avenue and the parents and it, it's tough because when they're that old the parents say look I can't drag them into school I can't make them go and and even legally um, we can't charge the parents in court it would be a referral to juvenile services and really the goal is we want them to be self-sufficient self-sufficient contributing adults in society and, and that you know that homeschool route and through the GED can you know, it was very helpful to us at times. How, how do we get compensated by the state for that? Are they is that in our numbers? What the the home instruction numbers? Mm -hmm. No, they're not in our numbers. No, they they so we track them because we also want to know what students that are of the compulsory attendance age requirement to attend school what where, where they are and what they're doing. And this is a state requirement that we do we track them. Yes. Well, is the state then reimbursing us some? 
money. I mean, we have people that it costs us money to do this, doesn't it? Yeah, it costs us money to, to, to run this program, but we don't get any funding for it because they're not in our number. Our number, as, as Matt alluded to early, once you have the big 70, 7, 77, 90 yes. number, then we start subtracting off of that to get to the number that we'll talk about later about that maintenance of effort, that number we get paid for. So this, and this these numbers are not in there. So this is something the state mandates us to track, but does not fund us at all for it. Correct. That's correct. Now, some of these students are monitored through uh, approved umbrella groups and we don't monitor them they just they just notify those groups notify us and say hey we have these students they're still with us and they're still in compliance but i guess what just concerned me as we go over these budgets every little thing that we have to do that's not partially or some funded by the state you know just adds to i mean i mean takes away from our other core when you get when you get down to it you know when the state they have the basic formula you mm -hmm. know they could easily say one dollar of this formula okay. you know goes towards these kind of incidental type of things. But as far as a specific funding source for this, there is not one. And we just finished our monitor, or we're actually finishing up our monitoring of homeschool students right now. We monitor twice a year, once in December and once in May. Do they require more than that, or is that's just what's expected of us? That's what's expected of us. Do you think we should do it more, though? Um, well, no, I don't. Because I, the vast majority, it's really not an issue. We have a handful that we'll have to have them come back in if they're not in compliance. Other districts have been more aggressive, but there's a whole <clears throat> whole group of the homeschool legal defense. I mean, they some of these are very, very particular, and, and they do not. They don't even like the fact they have to come in and talk to us at all. So um, it can be a touchy subject for some families. Yes. Any other questions about the, the homeschooling or home instruction data? Any other questions, period, about school enrollment? What else? Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Mr. Pfister? FY 2021 Budget Workshop. Um, so before you, good, good evening board members, um, before you is, uh, as we get into really the meat of the budget discussions and the sessions, I wanted to kind of just give you a little bit of high level overview of the budget process, some timelines, some things that we have to adhere to um, before we really get into the true budget work sessions where we're delving down and having those, uh, those real intimate discussions about um, what's feasible, what's fundable, uh, so on and so forth. So um, tonight, I'm just going to get like, again, just give a, a, a general overview, the budget timeline, a little bit of overview of the budget process, um, some historical budget information, basically, you know, where we are uh, with the FY20 budget. And then um, we'll talk a little bit about some requests and what the insight is from the schools and, and basically just some considerations that we as a board, uh, you know, as we go over the holiday break and as Kerwin and the blueprint, Maryland's blueprint comes about, uh, legislation starts, session starts in January. The, the governor's going to produce his budget in January as well. All those kind of things are really going to start ramping up in January. I just kind of wanted to kind of put that little, little, you know, little pin in some of those thoughts as we go forward uh, for your consideration. Uh, from the process that, you know, as you know, there's a lot of regulations that we, uh, as the, the board and how we prepare our budget and how it's disseminated to the public. Uh, of course, we have federal law, you know, ESSA, the Every Student Succeeds Act. Uh, there'll be the reporting, the Maryland report card, you know, has a big component of that. Of course, there's the state law, you know, what, what, what's mandated. And as we've talked about the blueprint and the Kerwin, there's a lot of regulations coming out of that and a lot of reporting um, and how we're spending those dollars. Uh, Comar, of course, you know, we have to abide by Comar. Um, we also have some county codes. And then, of course, you know, your board policies also dictate on how we move forward with the uh, budget process. As far as that process, um, the big yellow circle, it's, it's really much a 12-month uh, cycle. We really start 
in July through September having those initial discussions, things that have come out over the summer, MSDE pronouncements, uh, leftover legislation that may not have been enacted when uh, until the following fiscal year. So we start having some of those discussions. Um, and then we, we start prepping and, and doing some analysis and doing some of that high level stuff in October, November. Then we get into what we call the budget decision area and that's what we're really in the middle of now. And that'll last from December all the way through February until this board approves the budget that they're going to send over to their county, uh, to the county uh, commissioners. Uh, we'll have those discussions with the county, you know, March, April. Um, then the county approves its budget. And then the big reconciliation and adoption. And so once we send over that budget, and generally we'll send over what we think we need, and generally it's going to come back with less than what we want. <coughs> So there becomes that big reconciliation of, you know, where do we make the cuts? What adjustments do we make? Um, is there any kind of uh, revenue uh, enhancements that we can look at? You know, do we use a little bit more of fund balance? Or, uh, you know, all of that myriad of things will happen, and that will be a very short timeline. Basically, you know, it, it's half of May and, and most of June. So you're talking, you know, we've done all this work for nine months. Then we're hit with a bottom line, and we've got 45 days to reconcile nine months of work. So it, it, it does crunch it down to that time frame. So the, the better communication that we can have with the commissioners, get an idea of where they're going to be, the earlier, then we can start having those discussions. It would be lovely if they just rubber stamped what we sent over there, but we know that's probably just not a reality. Um, and again, just kind of laying this out, that was a little bit of a visual. This is a little bit more of, you know, in-depth, you know, the administration, Dr. Kane and her team. Of course, we start in October through January. We went with all the department managers, uh, public surveys we put out to get input from the community. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, import from you, the Board of Education, and on its priorities and where it needs to be. And all of that comes together with the superintendent's proposed uh, budget presentation. And right now, that's scheduled for February 5th. I believe last year we did a little bit later in, into March, so we do have some flexibility there, but that's what's on the schedule for now. When we get into the Board of Education work sessions, as we talked about, as I, as I alluded to when we first started this discussion, uh, in January and February, we're having those discussions. And then your adoption of the budget is, is right now scheduled for March the 4th. Then we, again, send it over to county commissioners. They hear it. We talk to them. We have me uh, administrative meetings. And then, of course, they have the public meetings. And then, again, once they decide what that budget's going to be, it comes back to us. And then we sit down with you to reconcile and, and have a, a budget, which has to be mandated, again, by that state law, going back to those regulations we started with, by June 30th. We cannot have an unreconciled budget on July 1. So that's a lot of work that we have to get done with you uh, by that particular time frame. Obviously, the budget's got to be balanced. Revenues have to equal expenditures. You know, we can't be the federal government where we can run in a deficit. We have to be balanced. And uh, we, we propose a balanced budget to uh, the board. The board, of course, balances its budget on its priorities over to the commissioners. And then when it comes back, whatever that bottom revenue number is, that's what we balance our expenditures to. The, uh, we have to keep in mind that we have very little control over the money that we get, and we'll see that here shortly. You know, we get federal dollars, very small, very small amount. County dollars, that's the majority of our budget. State, it's all formula driven. And then um, we, we get a little bit of fund balance that we might be able to use, and of course that really should be used for one-time things. And then we have some things that we can raise on our own, you know, use of building rates, a little bit of interest income we get from the money we keep in our bank. That, but that's so small that it's, it's nothing, you know, even increasing that by 50% is not even going to probably pay a teacher. So we really rely on the revenue that comes from state and, and county governments uh, to run our budget. Or we, we allocate different programs or something we might not find is necessary that was five years ago to today. Can we, we can look at that too. Yeah, we can look at that too. And then, of course, we, you know, we have some grant opportunities, as this slide shows. You know, we have almost $7 million in restricted funding. But again, that the key word there is restricted. It's there for a particular purpose. Most of it is supplement, not supplant. So it means that we can't take something we're currently doing and, oh, we've got this grant out here now. Stop doing it, reallocate those monies, and take this grant to do what that is. Yeah. Most of this money is your Title I and your Special Ed, and those two federal grants have specific non-supplanting clauses in those. They also have a maintenance of effort clause, which is a little bit different than the maintenance of effort that we're used to, but with Special Ed, I have to spend $1 more this year than I spent last year to be in compliance with the federal grant, both on the grant side and also on the unrestricted side. That sounds like from what we're hearing this year, we'll be able to do that. 
Yeah, fifty-three thousand dollars. Yeah, we'll get to that. So, so again, our source of funds, as you can see, fifty. 59, almost 59 point five million comes from the state. Thirty five point eight comes. I'm sorry, comes from the county. Thirty five point eight comes from the state. That other that I talked about, four hundred forty thousand. Again, you can see how small that is. Um, that's our interest income and and those kind of things. Fund balance, two years in a row, we've used. The four forty is what? The four forty is our interest income, our use of buildings, any of our small little things that we can raise revenue on. Besides those, what else do we raise revenue on? The ones you just um, well, we do get some reimbursements um, off the top of my head, interest income, um, use of buildings. Um, that's really the, the two big it. ones. Do you know of any others? We make money I'm on? sorry, what, ma'am? The buildings. We're not going to make it on... The, we're not making it on the turf fields, right? That's, uh, the, no, that's the, Parks and Rec. About eight years ago, we were severely losing money on building usage. Right, yeah. And we restructured that. that so that you know, the money Up goes in back cost. in it. Yes, and it was pretty successful. Um, but as far as generating more to achieve that, it, it, you know, you're not going to generate that much. But that's just for building usage. It's very little. Yeah, $440,000, that's... And then again, two years in a row with a fund balance, we've used $234,000 of our fund balance. As you know, last year we ended up with $72,000 left over, which was uh, very thin. Uh, so we didn't so really we, add to our fund balance pot last year that much. Yes, sir. We've balanced our budget with a, using the fund balance for two years in a row. Yes, sir. $234,000 each year. As an accountant, do you think that's very appropriate? No, not at all. Fund balance should be used at, for one-time expenditures. I mean, we're just digging. Out. I mean, we're 234 in the hole. It looks like we're this year already. And and as I mentioned, we we ended the year with 72. So 72 goes to that, but we used 234. So we're eating into our fund balance. So eventually, that runs out to zero. Here's a prime example. Jim O'Donnell, our maintenance foreman, just contacted me yesterday, and the generator at Churchill Elementary School is is done. So that's that's a $49,000 item. You know that. We're going to have to look in our capital to come up with, but it is an emergency item you need. Now, looking at the fund balance that's left over, you know, that just eats away. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. well, the fund balance, I mean, that's not even a one time cost, it's got depreciation to it. But if you're doing an operating budget, right oh, yeah, now, yeah, that yeah. just scares out. I mean, I, right. that, we, but prior to two years, this, this hasn't been an going, ongoing thing with the board forever. There has been, yes, I think that it, it is a budget balancing tool. And as long as you have the funds to do that and you can identify. It's funds because it's, it's, it's left over. It's not a reoccurring fund. It's not depending. revenue. But I think we've, in prior years, we've been, um, we've had enough available balance left over at the end of the year to supplement that fund balance, which becomes a funding stream in the prior year. But you are exactly right. It's something that should not be perpetuated for long term. It certainly, uh, we identify some things that if we had to, I'll use a generator as an example. If for some reason we put $234,000 in there and we were going to buy a generator, we would put that in there and that's specifically what it would fund. Knowing very well that next year, yes, there could be and certainly another generator that needs to be funded. So and if that was the case, the money would stay there. So you can identify items that are of one-time cost to use this fund balance. You just have to be prepared that if for some reason we don't have $234,000 to use next year, we're not going to be cutting people. We're going to be cutting those one-time costs. Whether, we, whether they're true one-time costs or whether they're we're going to have to do without a maintenance vehicle for one extra year. It's certainly not a one-time cost, but that could be part of the offset of a $234,000 use of fund I'll give balance. you an example. In 2016-2017, uh, which we were short about $1.5 million, and we were faced with potentially teaching, uh, cutting uh, eight library media specialists, and then we ended up cutting five central office positions. But in order to not cut all of those media specialists, that was one of the examples where we went into fund balance one time just to be able to balance the budget. But at one time, it happens to get Exactly, the exactly. What you never want to do is... And you, yeah. you say we're not going to be able to, we could get ourselves in a jam if we do this on a regular basis. Where I mean, because people's where our money is. I mean, you can only stop so many generators and buses. Yeah, and you'll, you'll see that as, as far as how much we really are people here. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. I mean, that's our whole thing. But you're exactly right. So, those, so when we talk about those one-time costs, we're certainly not going in using fund balance to pay for a teacher 
but we could we would certainly go in and use fund balance to you know look for some things if we cut out all meetings and conferences and and cut down on mileage allowances and things like that you know as far as you just can't travel anywhere or um, no no meet no teachers go to meetings so therefore they would not be using subs you could use that if we really got into a pinch to kind of make up for that 234000 So in November, when we had the financial audit done and the gentlemen were here presenting it, mm -hmm. you, at that time it was, we had a $90,000 fund balance. So what happened? With, okay. So you, you have the money that was left over from last year was seventy two. Well, it was $84,000 when you include the restricted. I have a tendency to be on the okay. unrestricted side. Okay. So it was $72,000 basically we had left over at unrestricted. But we've had a cumulative fund balance for the prior years, which is why we were able to use 234. Some of that is restricted to like inventories or purchase orders that have not been paid or things like that. Our total fund balance is about one point, and bring it with me, but about $1.1 $1 .1 million. And have. then we added seventy some thousand dollars to that. So let's say we have one point two. So that's our rainy day balance. That, that's our rainy day balance. That if we had to, we could use it as we have to fund the budget to balance. We could certainly use ask the county to transfer it to buy some one time items. Okay. But even at one point two million dollars, that is a very thin fund balance for a one hundred million dollar operation. A little bit one percent basically. Yeah, and it should be in the neighborhood of two two and a half percent. That's what I was going to ask you. That's, that's a, a two or two to three percent rainy fund. Yeah, GFOA set, recommends that you have two months of your operating expenses as available as a fund balance. We don't have that. And we have 1.2. Has that been pretty steady over the last five, eight years? Um, well, of course, it, it went. We only had seventy-two thousand dollars left over last year. The year oh, no, before, no, no, we, no. Had we, we, we had five hundred. We, we had seventy-two. Over, yeah, I mean, it's not. It's year. not. It's no, not mountains had, and peaks. It's, we had seventy-two over the year, but we have one point two rainy day, which is a balance that's been carried from year to year. Yes. So we've been but slowly adding to it. Add, we added seventy-four to it. Yes. Yes, but we're using two thirty-four. So that's a quarter of it. Yep. But our one point two has that been constant over the last five or six years? Quarterly. I'd have to say it's pretty close. Yeah, it's, it's like I said, it's not peaks and valleys. Six, six, right. six, six right. seven, eight. Okay. Yeah. Last year was a little too, a little too tight. What's the county cup run? I can get you that number. Fifteen million, thirteen. It, million. It's, 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 it's a large number, mm -hmm. which they will say you know helps them with their bond rating. I understand. Mm -hmm. And maybe, but, but I'm just thinking if we should be two to three, that's something we should strive for because I mean I can always assume we have problems. We well, go further along in the budget, you'll you'll see how tight it is, and we'll look at we'll already probably be in this situation again. Look at already with the special ed. I mean, we and that's why already. I'm suggesting you know, we look everywhere. I mean, because I mean our revenues and that's why are, we use we can ask what we want, but they're, they're yeah. limited what yeah. revenues we're going to yeah. get. So we have to also look at what we're how we allocate our money absolutely. internally. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so our budget going back. This is our FY20 funds, and you know, in total, we have you know, a little over 1.3 uh, million, 103 million dollars to spend. And but again, 7.3 million of that is is restricted. How that looks in a pie chart, as you can see, we get 57 percent, almost 58 percent of our money from the county. As you should know, or or, or as you know, the um, the formulas derived by the state are wealth uh, inversely to your wealth. So the wealthier you are. Queen Anne's is fifth or sixth wealthiest in the state, you're going to get less state money. The poorer you are, the more state money you're going to get. So that's why we get the majority of our funding from the county at 57.56, 36% from the state, federal, 4.78, but that's all restricted, um, and then our other and fund balance. So you can see, you know, between those two pieces of pie, that makes up, you know, almost 95% of our budget. From the expenditure side, well, where do we spend all that money? Well, 63% of it goes to salaries and wages, and 25.67 goes to other charges. Now, not everything that's other charges is fixed charges, which is your benefits for your employees, but a majority of your other charges is benefits. So when you take that 25 and add it to the 63, you know, you're in 88%. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a salary and wages 63, we're really around 80%. 80, yeah, you'll see that. Charges, yeah. Sal I mean, to me, salary, wages, and benefits. Yep. Mm -hmm. But like I said, everything in, in other charges is not, but the majority of it is. It's your health insurance, your retirement, um, and all of those charges. Your contracted services is your next biggest item, almost 8%, and a majority of that is your bus contractors. So if you think about I thought about this today. If you think about taking that, if we were an employee-owned bus company, just think about taking those and throw it into that big blue pot, and that gets even bigger. 
and then again less restrictions on where you've got the things to do so you almost have to include the bus contractors in there as, as that employees because you can't do without the buses you know we can do without a meeting or a conference we can't do without electricity or bus contractors so we break that into the dollar yes we are in the people business as, as mr smith alluded to so uh right about 86 percent is staff and benefits and 14 percent is everything else and let's carve that 14 percent down you know transportation electricity uh food service you start carving that down that's a becomes a very little piece of the pie that we have the flexibility to do short of having any kind of uh, staff implications uh, as far as balancing the budget and where we could get that money from. It's not a whole lot of money. When we look at other municipalities or mainly counties, is that 86 a number that most were high? We're high. Yeah, you normally you're in your 80 to 82 percent range. We're a little high. Now is that compared to the state or compared to the shore? I would have to say that at least the counties that I've worked in, so you know, but you are larger ones counties. with Prince George's. I've you know been Talbot, Dorchester. We, so we, we we pay we pay better benefit, not say better. We pay more percentage of our budget to benefit, and it's something to do with the size. I'm sure Kent County got some real issues. Yeah, but. and and the other thing that you have to look at is not necessarily the the salaries that we're paying. It's where we're putting our resources, whether that's more teachers, more assistants, more subs, more whatever. It is definitely going to the salary component, which again allows us very little limits our flexibility on the other end to make those cuts to make we those don't adjustments. Pay our subs much. No. No. But generally speaking, we put our resources in our staff. Oh yeah. And those years our, of it's being funded students at, to teacher ratio. And and part of that is, you know, those years we were funded at maintenance of effort and still trying to give raises as you were increasing that salary budget. That's where it all went. Those years you know, your salary budget just continued to grow and everything else kind of shrunk along Ra with raises it. Raises and benefits. Benefits, I mean, you know, raises are something with benefits when you talk twenty, twenty five percent is a big percentage of that too. You know, and that you, goes up no matter what we do. And the teacher retirement that we're now, you know, have to pay for. That we never had to pay for seven years ago. We have to pay for now. So going forward with some of the considerations uh, that I wanted to kind of put in front of uh, the board members, obviously we're going to start calling it the blueprint for Maryland's future, uh, future get away from just calling it Kerwin, because um, that's what you're going to hear everything about. The interim report was issued in January. It still has a four plus billion dollar price tag. So where's the money going to come from that? Um, there is a state and local share. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, shortly. It is anticipated to be a 10-year implementation, but when they get into legislation session, that could be a 20-year implementation uh, for them to be able to fund and pay for this. Continued focus on pre-K, as you heard the uh, governor release some additional funds, uh, was planning on releasing some additional funds. I think he announced that last week or the week before for pre-K. So you can see where that focus is. Obviously, the increase on teacher compensation, uh, that comes with its own caveat because of you know local control, local negotiations, uh, the career ladder. So there's a lot of implications related around uh, teacher compensation. I'd be anxious to see where that goes. I mean, state troopers, I'm assuming, are paid all the same no matter what barracks they're assigned to. That's correct. Would it ever entertain the state to work with the teachers and say, you know, a teacher in Baltimore is teaching here and teaching in Queen Anne's and teaching in St. Mary's? Never happened. I'm just throwing it out. I, I get but that. I mean, it, you know, everybody says, you know, you're not paying us, you're not doing it. Make it statewide and then take that away from us. And here's what you pay, you know, let the teachers do a state program. Because a lot of people who work for the state are all paid the same. I don't care if you're in Queen Anne's County or Anne Arundel. Yeah, but I, like you said, I don't think that would ever happen because you get too much power over there in Montgomery and Prince George's County. That are, and there's County. the difference. There's, You're talking a state agency versus a local agency. Right. I mean, there's if we were a state, local wealth it yeah. plays a huge yeah. role yeah. in that. Yeah. So yeah. if uh, if your locality is more wealthy, the state has to contribute less. Yeah, well, but I mean, it's, but you, we pay taxes to the state too. I mean, that can yeah. all be done. Because you know, it just seems but like we have 23. So it just seems like there's 23 being balanced all the time, and you know. You never mix apples and apples. You know, some benefits are better, some things are better, some hours are better. There's all kinds of different mm -hmm. things that yeah. run into this formula, depending on what side you're arguing. It's what side you're going to bring up, not us. But and you teachers know, are in a weird spot. They're county employees, yes. but their retirement system retirement. matches the state. Yes. Mm -hmm. So 
but they're, not funded by the state. Correct. Any but longer. they follow the same retirement plan that I would when I retire as a state employee. So it, it's it's a locality. Kettle of fish. And so a lot of it comes back to local control. The, right. I highly doubt that the state. Oh, I do. I just brought it up for the sake of <laughs> <laughs> argument, but I mean, I brought that up. But I just, you know. I appreciate you your devil advocate, the, uh, you know, look, outlook on things, but it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. <laughs> not gonna happen. Um, with the blueprint, um, there's going to be some comprehensive funding formula changes. Uh, it, you know, special ed's going to be involved with this. Obviously, we'll start getting paid for our uh, pre-K students as that gets rolled out. Um, however, what we've noticed, um, not only in the reporting that we've had to do recently related to the money we got this year from Kerwin or the blueprint, but what they've preliminary told us for next year, there's a lot of restrictions. You know, when Thornton came out, the idea was let's give it back to the local control, let's give them some money and let them educate their students. Now they're coming back to, well, we're going to give you the money, but we want it to go to this, and you got to tell us how you spent it, and we're going to make sure you spent it that way, and if you didn't spend it that way, then you're not going to get it any in, in the future. So there's a lot of things, you know, the future funding, as I mentioned here, likely to be restricted, but it still remains unknown. Um, and there is an increased amount of reporting requirements just related on this uh, Kerwin itself, um, and any of the new legislation, HB 486, and, and some of these other things, it, the reporting has just gotten astronomical. It really has. But it's just important to note that any projections that we're hearing right now are simply that. They're projections, they're proposals, they're recommendations, they are not set in stone. General Assembly hasn't met. Right. And, we're t and we're talking next year, not the year we're talking, I mean, we're talking budget. We're solid up. for... 21. 21. Uh -huh. That's at 500,000. Correct, but, but the, moving 22 on? Nobody yeah. knows. It's, They're projections. Right. Wide, but, wide open. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and again, additional funding via the blueprint. So for the, the only thing that's out there that's been posed that would be an additional money for next year is this $558,000 that's slided to Queen Anne's County. So it will be a little bit more than what we got in the current Kerwin funding scheme. But again, it's restricted to college and career readiness, the CTE pathways, teacher supply and technology. And here's the other little caveat. The state when they throw this money out there, if it's approved by the governor, because um, he has control over this, there is a state and a local component. As we've talked about, Kerwin, you know, the, 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 for the state to fund this, they're expecting the counties to fund part of it as well. With this particular, with the, the, these, but this particular funding, there is a local share and a state share, and the state has come in and said, we're not going to burden the county with the local share for fiscal year 21, so we're going to pick it up. How much is that? It's all part of this $558,000. Let's go to 22. Now, the state's only going to pick up the state share. Now, the local right now is not obligated to pick up that local share because it does not have any implications on MOE. So if they're above maintenance of effort and all of a sudden we go out and we spend this $558,000, both shares, and then for some reason, that amount that we're spending, let's say we hired a person for it, right? That's going to be a continuing effort. If for some reason, through the funding formulas and what the county decides to do, that they feel that they've met their maintenance of effort obligation in 22, because that's when all this criteria is coming, we may not get that equi equivalent funding from that local share. So we have to be very cautious as this comes out January, February, March, how we're going to spend those dollars. Right now, my inclination would be, again, going back to some one-time costs. Therefore, if for some reason we don't get that from the county, that match. The, uh, of we, the 500 and some, what's, what, what's the difference, if it's just roughly? Uh, I, I can get that number for you. It was 544, right? You mean it's, the, the it, split between the county and the local right share? Right now, it's 544, but the state's picking it all up this year. What I want to know is, what's the difference if the county didn't pick it up the following year, what will we lose? I didn't bring my Kerwin stuff with me, but I will get you just that. sometime. Yes, absolutely. So when we're making these things, we just keep that in the back. Yeah, oh, we'll, we'll hear about it in, on all these work sessions as we I go forward. I didn't know if it's the same percentage as wealth formula or 50. No, it's, it's, each county is different, it's, it, and, and, and again, it is wealth, it is wealth driven, the county share. So it could, we, they could be putting. In, we could be. We could lose two hundred five. I'm just picking a number. Yeah. yeah let's let's yeah, for round discussion half. fifty half. Half would be two fifty. Two fifty. Which would, so would be counterintuitive if the county commissioners didn't do that because they're huge supporters of the CTE pathways. I mean, they're outspoken about that. So that would be shooting themselves yeah. but, in the foot. But it, but it comes to that. it comes back to the maintenance of effort issue. That if they've through these through these changes, 
if they forecast that they've already met their obligation from a maintenance oh, yeah. of effort standpoint, then that's the only new money that they have to give us. They've met their obligation, but here's this Kerwin money sitting there that they're saying, we met our maintenance of effort obligation. We don't have to meet this. We don't have to meet this obligation and on, top, on top of it. There's an election. There's some kind of a push going on in the to. state to make that a requirement of locals? Not that I'm aware of. But I, I, as you'll see in the weekly report, I've got a couple of meetings in January um, that will get some more clarification, both with MSD the, and some of the legislature people. I would think the General Assembly, right, would have. A, yeah. They, I mean, we can have a recession. That's may not have I mean, you have a recession. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. I mean. Mm -hmm. And again, similar to last year, you know, that lockbox funding that was passed, you know, the casino money, they're relying on a lot of that casino <coughs> money. It seems to be still dedicated to the school construction program uh, projects. And there's even a little bit of fluctuation in there, whether it's going to be public school construction or the Maryland Stadium Authority and where that funding is going to be and, and what projects get funded under each. And we can certainly talk about that in the future. Mr. Pinder, I'm sure, is well aware of all those kind of things and those work groups and those reports and, and things like that that uh, we just don't know where that lies as well need local casinos that only donate to the local. <laughs> you know, that would have to be I, written I, I, in the I, I, county. Pray, and you're preying on the wrong people. I mean, that to me, I have a problem. I, you, I know, that's that's I know. dirty money to just me. The, uh, the, the good thing uh, from our employee bargaining units, as you know, all units have a two-year agreement. The only one that has a little bit of a reopener is Unit 2, where we'll be re renegotiating salaries. We've started those conversations, and we'll continue those in January and February if necessary. So we do or we will have um, you know, solid numbers as we go into these budget workshops as to what these negotiated agreements are going to, on, to cost us. But the nice thing is, is we don't have to play that game of what if, what it could be, what do we negotiate. We have a solid number. What is we, it? I'll get uh, that for you. Yeah. What, raise, yeah, what raise did we decide on? Oh, what, I, forgot. I, I need to know. It's this. a step plus one and a half percent for teachers. We'll have we'll have those discussions and and yes. as as part of some of our. We're committed. I mean, if if we're funded, we're committed to it. I mean, if, if for some reason we had a recession and the county cut us funding, we always have an out when it comes to mm -hmm. employee negotiations. But, but I mean, it's we a are funded, it's a, yes, it's a, we it's, a, it's, it's a commitment yes. we've made, mm -hmm. both to the, and the two-year is, we're on the second year of that. Second, well, this budget year will be the second year. When the so, first so we year have a commitment of a million, two million, million and a half, whatever the number is, you're going to tell us. Yes. And then also, we have a contract with the school bus drivers that's probably escalating a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, and we will be bringing that request it's forward like to you as well. 2%, two, I think. About 2%. 2.5. 2 2 so, I mean, the neighborhood of about $200,000, I think. And how, well, how many years is that one? That was three. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have we're coming up on this. So some of our year. big costs, we've got some, we've got some yes. known things. The, the variables yeah. out there are going to be health insurance, you know. Right yeah, but anyway, you, take, you take the teacher's package or the staff package, bus drivers, and benefits, and we could well exceed $2 million. Yes. Easily. 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 And we haven't even seen what the schools have requested yet. Well, that's, I'm just talking about that's what we've committed to for next year without even talking about anything extra. Yes, sir. Right. So as we, well we as. We've got to take some serious looks, places. As, as well as, as special education. That, that fund balance. Mm -hmm. no. and that's why fund balance says. I know, but a fund balance is okay, that's not, a, it's not a solution. Yeah. It is not a solution. That's robbing the piggy bank. Absolutely. You know, that's, that's not the fund balance I don't even look at. I, uh, you're going to find I don't like that at all. Okay. Finally, again, going back to the county funding, the blueprint is depending on additional fiscal support. Um, so, and we are, uh, you know, so we're going to see where that rot lies. I have had some initial conversation that this board's very concerned about technology and textbooks from the capital to the operating budget. So, um, I've started some discussions about seeing if we could move that. There's a little bit of Founders. reluctance to do so because they have the line item control. Once it comes into our budget, they don't have that line item control. There are some things that we can do um, when it comes to the maintenance of effort calculation. But um, to me, if you're funding technology at a uh, million dollars a year, that's an ongoing cost. It's not uh, necessarily capital. And again, whether they're going to be funding at or above maintenance of effort as this blueprint rolls out and the local share increases and what those projections are going to be, um, it's all going to be part of this conversation that we're going to have. Speaking of maintenance of effort. So as you know, the county is required to provide as much funding for next fiscal year as they provided for this fiscal year. Our total enrollment, as we just talked about, increased from a funding standpoint, 6.75 students. 6.75 students equates to $544,000. Let me get you the exact number. 
50, I'm sorry, 53,000. Come was in the wrong place. That's the last one. 53,000. come from? <laughs> Please, please retract that. Retract that. Fifty-three thousand five hundred and fifty-five dollars. Yeah, our students aren't that expensive. How do you come up with a point seven five of a student? I feel like you, uh, high school enrollment, I believe. Oh, for the part-time day. Part-time. Okay, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. I was like, but yes. So it's fifty-three thousand five fifty-five. Now, that's minimal. As you know, when we do the education effort. Um, if that calculation comes in. Last year we got that number December 20th. Uh, I inquired about it and was told we'll look into it, so I don't anticipate getting it before Friday. Um, but at first of the year, hopefully we'll get an education effort number. If the county has, has been behind because of the maintenance of effort that it had funded us at, there could be a price inflator to that, and it's called education effort, there could be a price inflator. If it's the same as last year, of a 2.5% place inflator, we could be seeing that $53,000 number could go over a million. But we don't know what that is yet. But if it goes over a million, we're still so far behind, you can't see. If we if we commit to everything we've done Sir. and don't look internally about doing some other things. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what's next? Um, we, we'll talk about the board priorities. We're going to we consolidated the school requests. We'll talk about those tonight. Departmental requests. We'll talk about those in January. Um, you know the, the administration team and its budget development about reducing, realigning, uh, see where we can make cuts, things that aren't working, things that need to be repopulated or repurposed. And then of course the budget work sessions. And where does all that lead? It all leads up to Dr. Kane's proposed operating uh, budget for 2021 that she'll be presenting to this board on February the 5th. Uh, as we have made a commitment, uh, the budget, uh, every dollar we spend is aligned to the strategic plan. As we, uh, some of the new board members didn't see those documents last year uh, as we discussed them, but we do align those dollars uh, as we're moving forward to the strategic plan to make sure that we support that and we'll continue to do so. Do you anticipate February 5th being a, a, a good date for that or do you want to so push we, it back we to So we sort March? of hold February, March, Last year we were March. March, yes, mm -hmm. that's why I'm asking, mm -hmm. because it may it, it behoove us pushed. to. We have, we have, we we're okay if we okay. Have to do that. Um, but it just is going to depend on how we get through the discussions and you know shoot, the shoot narrowing. Shoot for February and probably end up in March. Yes, yes, and that's what happened last year. Mm -hmm. So give us some. Are you at Pat? You've got the point of the um, school requests yet? Or not? We do. You We're going to go over that at a high okay. level a okay. bit today. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this request was your, not your request, but this one we got. Was yeah, this was our, our very first high level blush of some things that we knew we needed to take care of and, and other things. Now we'll get requ requests and we'll start to modify that from schools and from departments as well. And probably go up and not down. Oh, yes. No, oh, yes. We got a lot of. Going down to do. Any questions about the slides or the workshop? It's very informative. I just, you know. I mean, it, it, it comes down to it. There's not. Decisions. There are, certainly are a lot of things in our control, beyond the doubt. But when you really look at it, revenue is what the revenue is. We're handed it. I can't go out and we don't make widgets. I can't go out and increase production. Can't run a third shift, you know, to make more money. Can't do that. So that's set. The only thing we can do is control the expenditures on this side. There's very little non-staff expenditure. So if we have to make huge cuts, a recession or whatever, that's where you're looking because, as you saw, 86% of our budget is there. And that's if you need large dollars, that's where you have to go. Well, I understand that. Yeah. But I just see with some of the commitments we've made, you're using reoccurring money and or non-reoccurring money to me, but, I mean, we're just not in a very good situation unless we make some major decisions. And like you said, when this, when the staff come or the people come in with some of these other requests, it's you know, I mean, I'm looking at two or three million dollars right now. Yes. Right. And just to, to reset it for last year, the total county request was, I think we had two point six from the county last year. Yeah, right about that, two point six, yeah. two point seven. That might be some error have to it. But yes, additional money. Oh, here it is. Well, that, I mean, that's 2.6 is what we got from the county. So, you know, 1.1 was maintenance of effort, and they gave us an additional 1.5. That was 2.6. Well, one thing I'd love to do is take a very hard look internally. So when we ask for this much, when we ask for more money, you know, we're, 
look at what we can do to make sure we're doing the best we can internally. And I know we're requested to do a lot in this special ed, something we have no control over, which we already had a problem with so far this year. But, uh, you know, we're going to, yep, not that that's we have what that this tough... process is. No, I understand. Yeah, I've been not there. a problem, Mr. Smith. It's an obligation. It's an obligation, but we, you know, we got to gotta live within our means. Something we have to deal with. Yes. We do. So All right, right now we're going to go over the board member uh, budget priorities, which just got smaller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, delay our last. And probably <laughs> handed you. It doesn't apply anymore. Yeah, it doesn't apply anymore. Here's going to be a quick little presentation. So as far as the Board of Education budget priorities, you know, we sent out a um, survey. But um, to, get, to get an idea, I thought it was a little bit more um, regulated, and, and we got your information back. Um, so the budget priorities form survey was made available to all board members, um, but as of today, only three of the four board member responses have been received. That's me that didn't do it. <laughs> Why throw yourself on the bus? Well, I don't want anybody else going underneath of it. Don't worry, they can I figure out. They, 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 it won't take long to figure out who's underneath the bus. That's what my name is. I can work with you, Mr. Smith, if you if you want some help with don't the, worry. Uh, I don't the know priorities I have when I can't figure out how to get enough money to do the budget to start with. There we go. I'm working on it. But those priorities will help us narrow down and, and craft that uh, response exactly for you. So so where we where we are, the top five responses and how I scored this because there were more than five, obviously, and I know there were some comments that, hey, everything's a priority. I get that. Absolutely. But somehow we have to narrow it down. So I scored those. If it, if it was a top priority, I got five points. If it was a, um, the number five priority, I got one point. And if it was not a priority at all, I got zero points. And breaking all that out, you can see classroom student safety was number one. Classroom supports was number two. Special ed and student transportation were tied at 20%. And then central office supports. So those are your top five you as a board have submitted uh, as your top five priorities. Now we can certainly have a discussion about those. We could certainly change those. But as far as the form and the responses, that's what we're seeing. And the summary. So then we looked at the second one and the number six, seven, and eight were compensation for part-time employees, teacher class size, and additional academic programs. And basically all the other priorities that were listed in your survey, you know, uh, no one selected as a top five priority. So again, I know these are two different pie charts and they're all representing 100%. So this is 100% of the top five, and this is 100% of number six, seven, and eight. So don't think that because this blue is 60% that that outweighs anything on this particular slide here. Just but, a representation. But there's nobody put down raises for teachers. It could be because it's already been committed. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, there was done. some comments, and, and as a matter of fact, I'll go right into that. So some of the additional comments. Going back to, I think, compensation for part-time employees. When, it, when the IC part-time employee, that's all they're, they're not getting benefits. They're just getting compensation. Is that, that right. With the exception of our five-hour paras, who do get retirement because of the number of hours they work. Okay. But you're, we're talking substitutes, home hospital teachers, um, substitute bus drivers, substitute so custodians. They're, so they're, so I mean, they, they, that's, they're not getting any benefits. So yeah, other, other, other than their compensation. Other, correct. Other than you know, our FICA match and that kind of thing. But yes, no health, no retirement. So they're getting paid a lot. I mean, even besides dollar-wise, wage-wise, they're getting paid a lot less because they have no benefits. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, and some of the comments I just wanted to reiterate here, students always come first. I think we all agree with that. Uh, we do want to honor Captain Kelly to the negotiated agreements. We want to reevaluate new programs to con determine continued benefit, make sure that we adequately have funding in our legal services areas, adequate funding for special needs, and again, as iterated uh, by Mr. Smith, increased compensation for part-time employees. These were just some of the comments in the free form fields that uh, the board members so supplied. So board members, are you... You, you took into consideration we were already obligated for raises, or you did it. I mean, well, if we've signed a contract, I know. I'm just it saying. It sounds I'm like not, we're obligated, but we're if we obligated. don't have, if we are under fund, if we don't have it, then there might be a, I don't know, if that's we just don't break. I mean, if you don't break, if we don't look into that, then we might not have the money. I mean, we'll do nothing else. We're obligated. And unless we don't get the but money what, from we don't get the funding, that's one thing. Then we but can jump into it. Is there any way, like, I know we have a lot of um, vacation, not vacation, um, 
Personal days. Personal days, um, different things that, you know, we pay substitutes for. I mean, we could lower our substitutes and have the teachers, and I know it's all negotiated, so it is what it is. Well, now for substitutes. Substitutes is the law now. Right. Yeah. Substitutes the is the law now. We have to, yeah, bill, House Bill 1, Senate Bill 1. Oh, as far as, yes. For, yeah, for, mm -hmm, that's the law. Employees. Okay, tell me yeah. what the law is. Yeah, what do you So if about? they work more than 29 hours, mm -hmm. um, then we owe them um, one hour. One hour of leave time for every 29 hours. The substitutes. Uh -huh. so oh, I'm, I'm not worried about them. I think they're underpaid and overworked. Mm -hmm. for, I mean, when, when we have great teachers that Either we don't have them in the classroom or they're not in the classroom. That's what bothers me. So if, what if you're asking is, what, let me days. just, let me, yeah, you talk you're about talking about, days. so people, they, they have X amount of personal leave days. The teachers have personal leave days. They take the personal leave days. We have to supply a substitute. So that's an additional cost on the budget. So mm -hmm. that's what you're looking, well, it's, looking it's, at. To me, it's two things. It's additional cost on the budget and we're, we're nothing against the substitutes, but we're downgrading in our ability to teach kids because the teacher's not there. Well, that is, yeah, that is the dark side of that coin, but we are obligated to give those personal leave days. Mm -hmm. We can't touch that. Oh, and you meant personal leave days for the teacher. Well, they're just trying to work somewhere where the teachers, we, yes. you know, we, we're yeah. real big on absenteeism with our students. Are we real big to make sure that we keep, and I, I don't know what we can do, that we can make, just make sure it's very important to keep the teachers in the classroom as much as possible. Well, that effort is always made, but they have leave days for a reason. So if they need to be out and they have days, then they take them. And there's nothing that I would even want to do about that. I mean, because if you need to be out, you need to be out. Mm -hmm. and there's no quid pro quo on that. Yeah. I know, but that well, is, I guess is part of our and part of our discussion on visiting schools is the difficulty by not having any control or ability to say you want this Friday because they all want Friday. Could could we move it to Thursday? And I'm understand that the. The contract, which I haven't reviewed, says that they can do whatever they day they want, and the principal has no say over it. Is that correct? Well, that's something we have to talk about. It's no, noted, but that's what right. I think. It's, no, it's notice. They they give they, they have give, to give notice. notice. They have to give them notice. Short of them being, you know, calling in the morning, right. they wake up sick. Right. But if they give and notice, does the principal have the opportunity to say, "Can you not do Friday? We need you to do Thursday instead," because I don't have enough subs to backfill. You can always ask. But well, we I mean, can't tell. Correct. So they is that in the time. contract where they, they get they the day they leave. want no matter what? Correct. They have leave. Uh -huh. No, not leave. I'm talking about well, it's sick leave. No, the yeah. personal day. I'm talking about oh, the personal, personal day. Mm -hmm. That was a complaint of a about difficulty. The principles is that, that in that you certainly it? can ask Captain Kelly, but many of them have already pre-obligated themselves to whatever they're taking off for. And and if and the truth of the matter is if, if they don't want to change their day or if they have an obligation that they need to be somewhere or do something, they don't they don't have to. No, and, and, no and that's you're, not my you're point. Absolutely my right. point is we don't the, have and that is it's in the contract. Right. They can correct. take their day whenever yeah. they want that and is the, correct. And the school system has no say. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Okay. And then that might be something for future. I mean, you know, well, and it's a team effort. And, yeah, it should be. But if you know and I know one of the places that I've been, there's certain days you lose people because it's a day before a holiday or a day after a holiday okay. or something. But if we could sit there, and, and I'm not trying to work with everybody and say, look, Fridays are bad, Fridays before Christmas are bad, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, or Tuesday before Thanksgiving is bad, yeah. and, and you know, Mondays. You know, Mondays, <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, if the Ravens are playing Sunday night, you know, nothing to get them. Oh. But, I know they wouldn't do that, but <laughs> but I mean, we, we even we discuss attendance with principals when we do our monitoring yeah. visits, and they are well aware of it, and they work with their teams the best that they can. And I know probably you know not it's like every other visit, ninety percent do everything they can, and it's Absolutely. probably it's Thank probably you. ten percent that take advantage take advantage of anything. Mm -hmm. So it's not different. Mm -hmm. But I, I just hope we have a better yeah. just let everybody know that if they can work with us some. And and I. I think that's a given. Okay. It's not. Be. It's not unknown that Fridays aren't a good day, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Teachers know. Principals know. It's not. It's not a secret. They know, and they know if they're getting a sub to cover their Somebody class when they're gone. Mm -hmm. What we're finding is they're not. We don't have enough subs. And they're having to actually split up classes mm -hmm. so that they can. Well, that's why they're administrators, and they have to take care of their buildings. So it's. And I get that. 
Just plant the seed, mm -hmm. Dr. King. Uh, I'm, I'm trying <laughs> no. not to. We're trying to. I'm trying to support. You know, the the information that I, we have received. Out if there. you know what's a problem, you probably address it. We track it. it. Track that it. is correct. We, we, we track it. We discuss it with uh, principals, building Our leadership. Months. Yep. You and so I'm trying to others. figure out if there's a way we March. can can work on the in the future. We can't for this contract, but for the next contract, this be one of the bargaining points that we have. If, you know, one of the quid pro quos that we talk about. If they want this, then we need to have more ability to to you know to say that we just can't afford that many at all those personal days on Fridays you know well, I mean the principal had more days of lead they could say look I can lose two this Friday but I can't lose four yeah or get some you right know, or get I some earlier that. in the contract really earlier notification that. that would be these oh, are things oh. we need to think of in the future. What you're looking at is the, is the impact it has on our budget at have supplying and so our many budget and our, no, and our students. students that's I mean, the and it is. Thing. It is a reduction in educational time. I agree Correct. with that. You know, I mean, and I, I'm all students. for talking, you know, and of course, we're going on a vacation, and you don't want to take anybody any more than you have to, and it's a big thing not to let, have the kids out, but then you have a teacher out, which, you know, I'd rather have two students out of a class than I would one teacher, but... They're more, the teachers more, not impacts the students. more students. More impacts more yeah. students. And that's just, yeah, and I, like I said, I know probably 95% of them are probably on this, uh, in the boat. And probably 5% like everywhere else, it but just, it just, it, and it hurts everybody. They got to understand they're part of a team and you're only strong as your weakest link. And if we could just work more on it and or so try I, to. I, I wasn't going to bring this up, but now I'm, I'm going to guess I'm going to have to <laughs> because most of our employees know where I stand on this. But we do have this 90 minute rule. Um, and the the, design, the intent of the 90-minute rule some years ago, um, and many teachers, employees, let me say it this way, do use the 90-minute rule to avoid being absent for an entire day or half day. So there's this unwritten um, practice of allowing an employee to be gone for 90 minutes. In a day? Yes. 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 And still get yes. count as a full day? Yes. 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 Right. So this is to avoid uh, an absence. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've never heard of such a thing. I, is I, it our contract? It, yes, it is. It's, no, it's no, not. No, it's not. It's a practice. No. It's a practice. <clears throat> but it's working with your staff to keep them happy and to keep them at work. If it's work. not abused. Can I ask you real quick, are we supposed to be discussing this right now? Honestly, because we're... Your call. I mean, it's, it's open discussion about the, the budget, what well, impacts it, it, the budget. It, it, so it applies. It's, it's, not, individual, okay, it's, it's not an individual person. It's just. No, no. So no. you mean employees can take 90 days? 90 no, minutes. No, no, 90 minutes. minutes. In a day. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 90 <laughs> days in the beginning or end. That's that hard. And not have a problem. They have an hour of planning and they have half an hour for lunch. That is, I, I've talked to all the principals about this the last two weeks. And I've asked them how, what kind of. Um, difficulties they are having covering the hour of planning and their lunch and then how are they getting things done like bus runs in the morning bus runs in the afternoon and generally principals will lunch ask duty that person who is going to take the 90 minutes if they have a duty to get it covered by somebody right. and, and employees work together exactly. absolutely so if you need to go run your daughter to the dentist or whatever mm -hmm. or pick up your dog from the vet I'm going to cover for you. If I've got a planning time, I'm going to give up my planning time to cover for you. Right. That makes it such that the there's not a substitute to, that needs to correct. be called. Right. Um, business as usual. I'm already an employee in the building. I understand how things work in the building. It's easier. Right? That is the idea. And 90% of the administrators I spoke to, that is what happens. It builds camaraderie. It does. Yes, I it think does. it brings the team together. It does. And they're, they're working, and again, each individual principal is doing what he, she can do to keep, also keep the wheels real, moving. It also cause some it, real headaches. It, but the it other 10% is, but is that's what they're there really for. impacting the kids. That's the point. The I mean, you 10%. could run a business like that. Not that it, we're a well, business. let's just be honest. Well, each, bil <laughs> each building is a business. Oh, okay, but each building is a business with their own employees, their own, their own scheduling, issues and they have to make it work every day for the 500 students in their building that's I, I, they, they they're making it work and 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 the truth is also um i have you know certain concerns about the 90 minute rule right but the flip side of that is that <coughs> it does allow opportunity for me as a principal to work within my building to get coverage if i can't get a sub 
right? So that alleviates that issue because nine times out of ten, you know, for a short period of time, a half day, people subs want they don't make a lot of money. So if you only want me for a half a day, I might not answer that call. Um, so that alleviates that issue, right? So that that's another that's another piece of it. Yes. There there is an issue, but of course there's a fiscal impact. So it's how many times are we going to take 90 minutes? Right. And so we have had conversations with our administrators and we have not put a cut number on it because <coughs> that, I think, um, gives a, a, some kind of life to this thing, uh, this 90 minutes and, and um, codifies this 90 minutes some kind of way. So we've not given anything in writing about it. It's a practice that has been here for a long, long, long time, time. And I can guarantee you that it is a practice that will, um, uh, it's gonna be a huge fight if we wanna make a change uh, for it right now. In fact, I backed off of it. This is not the hill I wanna die on. I wanna ensure that our kids are getting instruction. I wanna ensure that our employees are able to have a little bit of flexibility when they need it, and that our administrators have the authority to allow that. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's six of one, half a dozen in the other. It's it's interesting, but don't leave Queen Anne's County and expect to get paid and not come to work. Well, I mean, but I mean, that, I hope they realize that. I mean, they have to work with the administrator or the they, principal or whatever. They do. They do. They do. They absolutely do. And it's a it's a once in a while thing, right? Or is this a, de a dedicated? I don't. I don't have a huge week? concern that uh, we have employees who are taking ninety minutes twenty times in a year. I don't. I don't have. No, that I just wondered. Concern. Is it cod of sort of codified to that respect? It's a. It's a. If you need it, thing, right? They, it's a they, once in a while thing. It's not a. It. Right. It's not a. Okay. Well, that's there's, a, that's there's somebody no, just. There's no. To my understanding. Minimums, maximums. To my understanding, it's every day. Somebody is probably Some, taking. Yeah. Every day. But not the same Thank somebody. Okay. No, so I'm not going to come in today and tomorrow and next and week and say, oh, I need 90 minutes today. I need 90 minutes tomorrow. That's not that's okay. not going to happen. No, but if a, if a principal or sister has to deal with that every day. They do not, deal they do. with that every that, day. That, that, that's a headache. Every I mean, day. they have enough headaches to start with. Okay. Much less having to be short staffed in with something like that. I think they that's do, I do. think that's why the unit two is looking to for if, a little raise. If 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 you're uh that's I don't care, right. elementary, middle or high school, it yeah. doesn't matter and you've got fifty, eighty, a hundred people that are employed in your business your building, building somebody is taking ninety minutes. Multiple somebodies on any given day are probably taking ninety minutes. Yes. And it is coded. So it's not as if somebody's just walking out the door and nobody knows what's happening, you know, with it. They do they do speak with the administrator and they do get approval to do it and it is coded in their um, attendance. But if we're understaffed, quote unquote, as some people think we are. Then as the building administrator, if I got five people out and three of them are in the math department, I can't afford for another one to be gone for 90 minutes, then I'm going to say no, I can't approve that. Mm -hmm. But even have to go through that all the time. I mean, on a regular basis to me, yeah. they, I mean, it's not like it's not like you got three people sitting on a bench and just bring somebody in. Everybody's got a job. That's right. And when you don't do your job, somebody else got to do it for you. Right. And I'm, and I'm, I'm going to ask as an administrator, I'm going to say, okay, is somebody there to cover your duty, your class, or something? And if the answer is yes, I'm probably going to be okay with it. If the answer is no, then I can't allow you to be gone. Now, if you need to be gone that way, then you need to use your leave and you need to be gone. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I look at it because like... Because at least then I get an opportunity to have a sub. But as an employee, I'm looking at it like, I'm just going to ask you once or twice a year. No big deal. Sorry about it, Dr. Kane. I but but you're looking at it like, I got two or three people doing this to me every day. That's that's a big, that's there, a big it, problem it's, to it's, me. It's, it goes both ways. It goes as an employee, okay, this is, I can't get beyond this. My husband's coming in um, from the airport at 645, school starts at 715. I just need 90 minutes so I can go pick him up and bring him home, then I can come to work. If I've got somebody to cover my class, all is well. My principal's probably going to say, no worries. You don't ask me for this all the time. That's just, and the principal has to figure that out. And that that's just the way. There's a lot <laughs> of pressure on the principal to make. The more than they, but they've already got probably enough to start with. I'm certain of it. Yes. And scheduling and, and when they don't have enough and they have to be creative about, you know, combining classes and creating 
you know, and, and, and when study too halls, much, too much. Yeah. study halls, 12, 15, to, to watch What's kids, you know, and then again, the instructional time. And, is you know, I, 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 I know I'm a hard head, but it you impacts. know, every, the it's teachers want to be paid. They're working 189 days, they, this and this, but they get a lot of other benefits that goes through this. And people don't understand there's a lot of perks that other businesses and people don't get. And, the, you know, and you talk about the central office, all you're working, you know, I mean, you're, well, you're 24 seven, but I mean, I guess most of you all are 24 seven, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's, you know, and that's a difference. So you get right and, down and to it, they're teacher, probably doing better than you are. We're now 26 Nine seven. times <laughs> out of 10, a teacher is not, yes, they do clock in and out, but they're still working. They're, they're still working. Yeah, they're so taking stuff home. Exactly. They're still, they're just they're like going we in say, at seven o'clock in the morning for tutoring. Stuff, we're going to take it home and put on socks and do it. We're just not going to be here doing it. We're still doing it. You know, I'm just looking at the, the problem the administrators have of that can be can cause. Maybe they can handle it, but it just seems like a. Our, it's under our, control. our principals are working with their staff and they're making it work. Right, nice anybody else? We have a budget survey results. You got that? Yes, okay. Well, I can tell you, my, my biggest concern, and actually it combined a few areas, so it was hard to pinpoint one, was as a parent of a special education child, safety is a huge part. They're the most vulnerable students we have. We need, it's our obligation to keep those students safe as well as educated. And I feel like we're very short in that area, and we need to make up that area. In the safety or in the special ed? Both, keeping them safe, keeping them in a classroom where they have their one-on-ones or their pairs that they need. Well, and I've had that people who were educated and trained to address their needs. That's I, I drew the line on both of those as well, <laughs> with safety and special ed. I, a, that's where I was as well. Package. Right, I was going to say, so safety, as you're speaking of, it is in ensuring that they have the appropriate personnel to support yes. whatever their needs might be yes. mm -hmm. um, in any particular class or other resources. And if we have, say there's a fire in the building, mm -hmm. how are you going to get those students out? And there is a plan safely. for each right. child. But the the child really who needs a one-on-one, -on -one, do we have enough people to give them a one-on-one? -on -one? Right. Do they need a feeding tube? Do we have people trained to do that when somebody's out Yes. Mm -hmm. as a backup so nobody's missing a feeding? Right. And some I mean, kids are more, not disruptive, but have behavior problems, and it can be a threat to themselves and staff. Sure. And they need definitely special care. Well, it's good to clarify that that, because I, I had a different mind of what safety was, and it wasn't described. I mean, there's, I think there's the bigger That's umbrella of safety for our schools, yeah. active right. shooters, that kind of thing. But when you get to your special needs, it's a whole yeah. different flavor of safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These are vulnerable kids. Both right. for the no, student. No, don't doubt it at all. I, I didn't think of that. Either. And their needs are going to be heightened, and their parents' concerns are going to be heightened. Sure. So I think we have we to need take to. Perfect example is my friend's grandson who died in Anne Arundel County. Was, um, however, whatever happened, and he swallowed the glove and died. Um, you know, we these things unfortunately should never have happened, but. Mm. And our kids' medical needs are just getting bigger They're getting and bigger. bigger and bigger. We have to be mindful. Yeah. All right. Last but not least of the presentations, and this one's very brief as well, uh, is the budget survey results. And um, to summarize the results of the 2021, um, there's a f picture of the front page with Dr. Kane's picture there that the... Um, the survey response was November 22nd. We had it basically open from October 23rd through November 22nd. We sent out emails to staff, social media communications, website communications, school communications, the schools were asked to send something out. 23 questions in total broken into specific categories. Whether you were a parent, it directed you one way. If you were a staff, it directed you one way and the community another way. Um, and you could certainly go in multiple times because you could certainly be a parent and a staff and you might want to answer the question. So um, the responses that we got didn't necessarily mean unique individuals. It was just a number of responses. When we went through the responses, we only had 122. And this was the breakout. 57% of it came from staff. 35% of it came from a parent and 8% came from a stakeholder. At that time, last year when we did it in January, we had over 436 responses. Well, obviously, we didn't get the response that we wanted. Your social, social media advertisement, what, what do you? I believe it's Facebook, Mr. Mm -hmm. Straight, Facebook. That's it? 
Like so, so, so okay. but our staff probably knew about it. I would think. And that's why we got 57% of the respondents were staff, mm -hmm. which is actually mimics the 436 represent. Um, well, 436 50, responses. 56% of the 122 was staff. Yes. So and that means there was only like maybe 70 staff. Yes. Out but, of a but, a, but a, the unique thing is that same percentage, even though we got 430 some responses last year, it was the same. Was it right around the same response mm -hmm. number? So. Having this conversation with Dr. Kane, uh, we decided because of the limited response, we decided to extend the deadline to January 6th. And uh, repost okay. and get schools to send it out again. Um, when the schools send it out, they send emails or paper or what? In the weekly newsletter from the two schools I deal yes. with. Yeah, and, and sometimes they do both. So they'll put it in writing, um, email, and also on their page. To be honest, of course, though. we have it on our page and we put it on our Facebook. Um, we have not had as much, you know, there's been Elementary a lot middle will do it. They'll see it because it's in their folders. But high school, it's very hard to get a high school parent to see and anything. To, to your point, Ms. Harper, interesting, because uh, you know, I was reviewing last year's presentation, and Dr. Kane made those exact comments that it seemed like we had some good response from the elementary schools last year. And interesting enough, in this response, we got a better response from the high school. Because it's in that weekly, well, the Queen Anne's, it's in that weekly thing. Okay. So we're going to put it back out. That's and then we'll we'll have we'll expand upon this to see where the community is going to lie. Um, I didn't want to go any further than this uh, because I think only 122 responses was not representative. So okay. we'll when you say on social out. media, you just mean it goes out on our Facebook account. That's mm -hmm. it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because there's like Ken Island happenings. Can go. There are things that <laughs> yes. can go out. No, I think we're only people. talking about what we did now. If somebody who's <laughs> Ken Island happenings <laughs> wants to repost it. They could certainly do that. Because we yeah. need to be able to collect but, the data. Yeah. yeah. But we only put it on the things that oh, we have No, but I mean, you know, collect it on the what? I mean, to well, we collect we're it through the Google form. We're talking about advertising. Yeah. Right? Well, the, the Facebook page would have the link to this particular survey. The, the page. Yeah. Yeah. Just saying, Instagram these are sure. things that yes. get spread real it's fast. It's open to the public. Mm -hmm. Anybody. The people in Alabama could do it if they want to. <laughs> and that's it for the presentations for tonight. So, uh, budget discussion, school, and so central you, office request for three board members, and there's two here. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Kane, would you like for me to do the intro, or? Um, so yeah, I'll just um, say this. What we did was we prepared, and um, you know, John, Mr. Fister will talk about it. But we're giving you a broad overview. This is just school requests. We'll do central office requests next time um, okay. in January when we have more time to go through it. We wanted you to have an idea of what schools are asking for. Now last year we narrowed it first before we brought it to the board. This year we haven't narrowed it at all. We wanted you to see all of the requests up front and then exec team will go back and narrow some of this. Um, but we just wanted you to see what the requests are. We have not dug deeply into um, the requests as they appear to you right now, all nice and pretty and summarized. Thank you, Mr. Fister, who has been back all of two days. Um, no, but thank you, too, for putting the, the projected budget cost on this, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that and, and, helps a lot. And also a bit of an explanation as to right. what the dollars or the request, um, you know, would entail. So... This is uh, for okay. each of the schools. It's in alphabetical. No, this is by elementary, middle, and um, high, high school. school. And if you don't see a school there, it's that they did not have a request. Okay. Um, so with that, we'll have Mr. Fister to just sort of walk you through. Thank you. And, and again, I, I did kind of, uh, I'll use the term, we, we put this together. Um, not in haste, but we got it out because we wanted to have this discussion tonight. And I've already noticed the first three lines have got typos in it, and it's just a matter of cutting and pasting. The description is correct, teacher printing for Centerville Elementary. But if you go to the right, to address the increase enrollment in grade four, it really should say increase enrollment in grade in pre-K. So I will issue you um, okay. no, uh, new fine. ones on that. But, make it. but you get the idea of what it is. So this is very similar. It's a little more expanded than what we did last year, but it's very similar to the forms that we started talking about last year. The school's requests were green. When you see the central office, Office, they'll be in blue um, and those and that combined with uh, visually if you want to take a look at this this sheet that aligns it to the strategic plan those were really the three documents that we worked the whole budget process from um, we started you off with the thing that mr. Smith had mentioned earlier today with the five-year range
range. So you have a five-year range uh, based on the, the state reporting requirements. We'll be supplying you over the next couple of weeks, you know, this high-level document, this high-level document, and, and that should pretty much give you everything uh, that we would need to make those decisions as we go forward. Come on. We didn't distribute. Not, not, this, right. is this, this is last year's. This is last year's. Right. Yes, this is last year's. Just from a visual standpoint, I wanted to bring that to your point. So what you have in front of you is the school requests, and it's broken up by elementary, middle, and high staffing first. So you can see you have Centerville, Kent Island, Graysonville, then it goes into the middle schools. You can see what they're asking for there, unified arts. And really the discussion tonight, I mean, this is a lot of information to take in. If you certainly, if you have questions, we'll answer them as we can. But it is more of a reference document, kind of just to get the conversation started. So you could see, to Mr. Smith's point, you know, we're starting out of the gate with $2 million in, in obligations. And these are some things that are going to even add to that number. So we just kind of wanted to go some, some high-level stuff. If we flip the page. Let me ask you a question. It yep. looks like with a teacher, we're putting 71.5 for a teacher which includes salary and benefits. Yes, sir. But that, All of these that's budget how, costs are going to include either if it's a non-salary, it's going to be the actual cost of the item, mm -hmm. or the benefits will be built into this. And this is with a 71.5 as a uh, starting teacher? No, sir. Average. It's an average, average teacher. OK, so it's not a, it's not a, not a it, it could be a five, because I noticed you're not going to get some of these teachers, first right, year and teachers. So, right. And so when, when it all comes out in the wash, when we actually hire somebody, then we can double back and we can say what the actual is plus their benefits. So we're taking a middle of the range. We're Correct. not taking a first year teacher. We're not taking a 10 year yeah. teacher. We're taking a. Okay. Just for budget. Because no, generally, the, the way it works is yes, eventually you'll get back to where you have to have a brand new teacher that you replace. But from a budgeting standpoint and all that I've done, you select the average salary right. because you could have an existing teacher, especially when it becomes a promotional opportunity. You have that length, um, tenured teacher who takes a specialist position, and that tenured teacher gets backfilled with somebody who might have five years. So eventually, yes, you do get down to that, but it's, it, it yeah, would not be the most equitable way to It's not a realistic budget. figure if you're taking all for one year. Yeah, first it, would, year it wouldn't be realistic. That's what you're really Right. Okay. Um, so we have middle schools, and then we flip to the high school. So the only high school that asked for um, additional staffing on page two was Kent Island, and that was a PE teacher, PE health teacher. Because they're using middle school teachers? The um, part, yes. yes, partly. Does a bad or whatever? Correct. They're using four of them. The alternative school or the Arise Academy, there's um, requests there um, for counselor, online uh, learning facilitator, secretary, nurse. If you were here last year, you saw that same request last year. Uh, but in total, 18 and a half positions totaling $1.2 million is what the initial school requests were, as shown on page three. And this is so far, or this is it? This, they've met their this is it. This requests. is what they submitted. This is what's coming. And this, you just asked them, their, not say wish list, but this is, you've asked them what they would like to have, and this is what they told you. Yes. Yep, to tell yep. us their needs. Yep. Um, and we've, we've vetted it, but we wanted to give you, you know, the, the true picture of what every school has, has requested. Page four. Um, I, I added a couple categories this year, so school-based, part-time, or other needs. Ken Allen is asking for some substitute dollars to do some observation rotations. Maddie Peak Middle is asking for an additional paraprofessional, and Arise is asking for some part-time wages to do some after-school detention. This was a new category this year, but it just gives you that, again, that idea <coughs> where last year they may have done this same request, but the administrative team vetted this out and said it wasn't realistic, now, I'm, as an example. But this, we decided we wanted to give you everything that they had asked for. Bottom of page four is the materials of instruction summary. So I have to say a majority of the schools are adequately funded based on these requests, with the exception of Kennard. Um, feel they're adequately um, um, supplied with the budgets that they need to provide the supplies for their teachers in their classrooms, because uh, we get very few requests, as you can see here. Isn't that the largest elementary school we have, too, is Kennard? Kennard and Centerville. Right Central Elementary, there. practicing. Bayside. Part of this was... Oh, Bayside um, is bigger, right. Yeah, Bayside and... Yeah. Uh, uh, Probably a third of two biggest Kennard's request was related to implementing a new STEM program. It was yeah, about $6,000 in materials there that they wanted. Um, Ken Allen Elementary, a music program license and a, a special education intervention program. And then Southersville, I think we've discussed this before with the Gateway to Technology program and the needs to fund the position there. And this is the supplies to support that. They've been asking for this kind of thing. And then the yeah. big list on page five and six are really the technology and capital needs, first blush, that these schools have requested. And it ranges from classroom furniture that's 20 years old to cafeteria tables that are a safety concern to Chromebooks at the lower schools to projectors as they age out. 
um, you know, I, one comment from one of the uh, schools was, hey, they're five years old, they need to be replaced. I, I don't know what necessarily the livelihood of that is. I thought it was a ball, but, you know, and then uh, got, resolution and all of that. 22 years old. Yeah, yeah. and we do. So you're going to see everything. I did try to break it out between a capital request, which we would consider either something that Mr. Pender's shop would take care of or technology that Mr. Paluski's shop would take care of as far as going forward with this request. But as you know, most of our technology does come through the capital budget, but I wanted to break this out for you uh, so you could see. Um, and just and just one second. Yes. And um, you had the technology plan presentation a right. few um, um, meetings ago. ago. Right. And if you recall, the school requests line for this year and next year had to be cut. Mm -hmm. So that's where this would have come from. And again, that's broken out by elementary, middle, and um, your two high schools, and no requests from the alternative school. So it, it's really meant to be the high-level discussion, but you get an idea of some of the things that need to be addressed. Um, and with that, we can answer some specific questions, or you can take the holiday break to... to uh, they would add questions yeah, to the Yeah, that, that's a good point, Mr. Pelosi, yes. Um, so as we've been asking, you know, for the questions as we go through this budget process, if you see something here or want to know what the total staffing is at a particular school, I'll be giving you some binders with some of that information in in January, like we did last year. But if you have specific questions, certainly email them or put them into that Google form I believe everybody has access to, and then we'll get them answered for you. So you guys are going to cut this down we are. with the recommendations. Right. We wanted you to see okay. everything. So okay. say, for example, if a, a school requested a teacher, and I'm just going to pick a grade in first grade, um, and they're expecting a, a decline in enrollment in first grade, we are going to cut that request. Mm -hmm. and, but you also look at it, and I'm not, it, 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 for you guys that understand if there's something they don't see that you know we need. Because... You know, I mean, if a ask me that one more time, like a gutter leaking or grading or oh, something yeah. that maybe that, that you yeah, that, that that with that's a plan. not all there. We right. have all that, but you've got all that somewhere. Yes, because I mean, sometimes they, they're looking at plan. you're going to be school giving things us rather than some of the other list. things. And yeah, and they, and they know that that is yeah. like a generator. From that. Nobody care about a generator. But what you will see is uh, requests <laughs> to repay parking lot. I understand? Or, they they or ride lines that, or something like that. I'm right. talking about the hidden things that can cost money. They don't. Yes. As long as it's working, That's not but you might know it, but they don't. Yeah, yeah. We include what we do is we just got this, so then we'll take that and interweave it into. But you know, yes, sir. So what I don't see on here are any of the secure the security systems. We replaced all that, the lighting at the parking lots. This yeah, this is just. This is just what the schools turned in. Oh, okay. Yeah. So then we have a whole separate system level um, with security cameras and all that stuff on there. Separate plan. Those the things principals are, are aware yeah, being of. done. Mm -hmm. I'm coming from the safety grant. Yes, yeah. that's what I was getting to. Yeah, yeah. No, this is just what the schools, the principals, through their give schools us, and their leadership teams submitted. Give us a list of all the painting that's going to be done this yep. summer. Okay. And as we and then as we narrow this Sorry, down, I just got no, and as we narrow this down, that blank column that says class size, the current, the requested, and the actual, we'll be filling in those um, um, as we get a little bit further and we narrow this list down. Then we'll you'll be able to see what the current class size is for that particular request. As Dr. Kane mentioned, you know, why do you need an, you know, an extra teacher if your class size is already at 21? You know, do we really need them to be down to 17? Won't we all love that luxury? But also, if it, we don't get it, it goes up to 26 or 27, then certainly we might want to look at that. So you'll see that. That's what you all are going to work out yes. for us. Yes, yeah. yes, okay. yes. You'll be provided that information. What's a, um, just, it's a math thing in Sadlersville, the... QACPS MS schedule. What is that? That's the um, middle school schedule. Right. So that particular school is requesting some additional um, teaching staff so that they can sort of vary um, the way that teachers work together. Um, and so that's what that's referencing. And, and so MS is the middle school schedule. Oh, okay. I thought that was a new math. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a middle school right. schedule. Math science. That's not, okay. Thank you. Is He's, what the request was. Yeah, Mr. Watkins commented on that today during our tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was in desperate need of that. 
Any other questions? And and over the break, you know, you get some things together, and you just want to shoot an email off, you know, to add it to the list. Of yeah, I'll be monitoring you email over yeah. the break. So yeah, please. add it to the um, ongoing list of the questions, the running questions, and so we'll make sure that we get those answered. And um, do check in at that, take a look at that list again, because some of the questions that you answer, or all of the questions that you ask, we answer. We're going to answer. It's good. Yeah. You can find them there. Uh, next item is a current action item, the purchase of two maintenance trucks. Um, yes, <clears throat> board members, I'm seeking the approval tonight for um, two replacement vehicles. Uh, the first one is a um, 2020 Ford F-250 Super Cab truck, um, which would replace the 2007 truck that our custodian foreman drives, which currently has 260,000 miles on it. Um, and I'll say this, Mr. Yeah. Carter is out in the snow when I'm out, and it is not a four-wheel drive vehicle. Um, and also, we were, wanted to purchase a snowplow to put on there to assist with doing the parking lots, as Mr. O'Donnell does when parks and recs are out there. Um, I did go through, and Montgomery County had a contract we could piggyback on. And we also went out just to see what the prices look like. And I was quite surprised um, that Montgomery County's contract came in with Apple Ford for $37,715.52. And you can see below um, the other proposals that we received range anywhere um, basically from 38,000 all the way up to 45,000. So by piggybacking on that contract, we were able to um, shave quite a bit off of the price. This will include the plow on the yes, front? Yes, ma'am. Yep. And it's gas, I hope. Yes, sir. And we didn't do diesel. No, just like make, I mean, we don't yeah. need that. No, no. It, this, is, Everything. this is a bare bones truck with four wheel drive. Um, the second vehicle that we're looking to purchase um, is a 2020 Ford uh, E3, E350 cutaway with the, um, the body on the back that the maintenance guys can get in and store their equipment. That will be from Apple Ford, and that will be to replace the 20-year-old truck that we currently have on the road. Um, so again, we wanted to piggyback on Montgomery County's contract, uh, $40,923.63. And if you look below, just to see what comparisons were, um, it ranged anywhere from 41.5. Um, up until 47,000 um, were the other bids that we received. Um, that both funding will come out of the FY20 capital, which already has uh, was allocated for those trucks in there. How do we get rid of our old ones? Our old ones, what we do, we drive them basically till they go in the mm -hmm. ground. We then assign them to a school um, so that we can transport uh, equipment as in chairs back and forth. Um, we basically take it till it won't go any longer. Then we put, put it on public surplus, which is a government um, website that anybody can get on in bed. We do that with our buses also. And you may pick up, you know, $500 here. You may pick up $5,000 for, um, you know, a bus. It all depends on the condition. Some of them, we've had people come all the way from Florida to pick up and uh, use those. We just had a, a gentleman from uh, Chicago come and pick up our... Uh, two vehicles that no longer run anymore that were um, that we replaced so it just depends on the the service so we, just, we just move them down the, yep. these that you're using now can be moved down to something less priority yep. and then they're out the door so what happen is you'll have something where we need to get chairs to from uh, centerville elementary centerville middle school to canard for a christmas concert because all of our schools don't have you know folding chairs to accommodate that amount of people so the custodians yes. will then use that vehicle to pile them in there and move that so, I mean, you can get another couple of years out of them. We take everything that we have, and we, I mean, it, yeah. it, I mean, it, I mean as you see, the one's got 20 years it stays on in it. Queen Anne's County, so they're only a phone They don't work, you go to Queen Anne's auto body shop yep. and fix yeah. it. And <laughs> so, but, yeah, public surplus, we've been very successful using it's that. Um, and, again, it just depends on the needs of it. So. And once we don't need them, we get, I mean, sitting around doesn't help us either. No, once, yeah. once it gets down to, hey, you got this many problems with it. We list all those problems on public surplus. Okay. And that way, anybody can bid on it. Nobody's going to say, hey, you sold it to your buddy, or you did this, or you did that. It's a legit way to do the business. Get rid of it. So, okay. 
Does anybody else have any more questions or comments? Since this is all Apple Ford, can, is it all right that I just go ahead and do one motion? It, I mean, it's the one, one vendor. So uh, do I have a motion to accept the uh, purchase approval for a 2020 F-250 Super Cab long bed for the amount of $37,715.52 from Apple Ford and out of the FY20 capital uh, budget and the purchase approval for a 2020 Ford E350 cutaway for $40,923.63 from Apple Ford, again coming from the FY20 capital. I move. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. A motion and second. Any questions or comment on the motion? All those in favor of everything I just said, raise your hand and say yes. 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 Anybody opposed? Say no. Uh, yes, have it. The motion is carried. Thank you very much, Mr. Pinder. Thank you. Do I need this to sign in? You? Okay. Uh, we're at a point now at 632. Uh, can we take a break and then come back to do the appeals guide? Is that all right with everybody? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. We'll be back shortly. Back. Thank you very much. We are now at our appeals guide review and update. Dr. Kane, how do we want to approach this? So, um, in the past sessions, the last times um, that they were discussed at work sessions, we sort of had both. We had two documents. We sort of had the document that we were revising, and then there was the document that um, the current one. What we just received. Um, it's a little difficult to tell which revisions were uh, made most recently because I'm not seeing a, a date stamp on it. But I think if we start looking at what we already had, which is attached to board docs, and the new document okay. um, that we have, we can start to tease out. And the <laughs> only way we're going to get through this is sort of t is to go page by page. I, I, I concur. Um, so if everyone received the email from Mr. Burns, he has in, uh, inputted um, some of the new terminology from uh, Maryland Annotated Code. He's given us a couple revisions on some of the, I, I mean, if you go through, have, does everybody have it up, you know, the what, email? The, the one that we have on our board docs is the old one. This is this one. Correct. Is this one. Correct. The, the one he sent us will be in an email, right? Correct. Is in the email. And I'm going to catch up with you guys. So the purpose of this is to take, we have three different, uh, you know, 6-202, 4-205C3, and 7-305. A lot of it is repetitive mm -hmm. terminology. His um, recommendation is we have the beginning purpose with the uh, process of content, the definitions, and then under each of those sections, what the... Um, I'll pull it up here. It's 7-305. Is that, uh, it, that's page 28, starts on page 28 in the board docs one. The, right. The current one. Mm -hmm. And then just the appeal information, making that underneath rules of procedure, rather than having to re-put all of the the definitions, the process and content. I, I think it's it, it will reduce it by almost 10 pages. Um, do one basic. Right. Purpose, and, here's the purpose of this. And then do the, cha the differences right. by the three. And, Under yeah. each rule, each, each different, um, and I don't know what you would call it. Uh, appeals, the appeal, way that they can. Appeals um, process mm -hmm. for each different kind of appeals and hearing. Um, and explaining, he has it explained in here. I, I don't know. It's a type of it. appeal, right, Jackie? It's basically called a type of appeal. So the, the de which part do we want to include once? For which page should we be? <coughs> I'm on page two, and I see red. Is that changed? That's his, that's his edits. Content, I think that's stuff. his edits. Does yeah. that page start with That made us start on page uh, five. Okay, starting on page five. The Rules of Procedure, paper one, 4-205C3. So the purpose, process, and content, initiation, hearings, representation, all the way to decisions, which is to page 12. 
Maybe tomorrow. That will be information that goes across all three of them. Okay. So the appeals information form, notice to the appellants under 4-205C3, the form will show up. The purpose is to provide it for this particular kind of appeal. Here is the form. All the pertinent information that you need regarding purpose, process, and content, all that will be for each one of them. And um, again, it's just going through and kind of daunting here at the moment. <clears throat> but he has inputted. So all this stuff in red, he striked the stuff that's coming. Well, said. the stuff in red is where he's actually put the new code. Um, his edit. All the it's red his edit, edits. yes. Okay. Under what's overview, it? you see here. Green? I think um, that's edits he made too. Prior. Different. Prior. Yeah, prior. yeah, it's prior. Yeah. Yeah. Right, which was actually extrapolating on the, the process of it. Something that we, we did need to decide on, and Mr. Pluski and I talked about this earlier today, is calendar days compared to business days. Right. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask Jackie about that because she knows Martin how knows. this works. Because um, I've got it written in. Um, because this has been a problem when she's worked appeals with me is, it, you know, the way they describe it is conf a little confusing. They're saying it's it's 30 days, it's all calendar days. Um, Except where noted, where there is a spot there, the superintendent has business days, five business days. What, what page is that? Uh, uh, page five at the bottom, it's the definition of days. Because we, we do currently school days. Right. right, business days. <clears throat> well, the, uh, number but five says days mean calendar days. Number five, days or calendar days. Yeah, we, so I don't know why we're using complaints policy yeah. at school, school days. days. Yeah, but Which that, is different from... Yeah, from well, what our board... Uh, in definition, appeals. page six, page, uh, six, page, six, page five G, G at the bottom. Days means calendar days unless otherwise indicated in computing any period of time prescribed by these rules or by any applicable statute. In the event designated period considers calendar days, except, and again, there's a spot here in under three, initiation of appeals, B2, within five business days after the superintendent's submission. So do we want to make it all? And for Calend uniformity, I would think throughout it needs to be business days. Okay, so we're in um, initiation of appeals. It's number three under process and content. And looking description at of days. C one and two, as it is here, this, the description of days is meaning calendar days. But then in here, we have actually put five business days, where everywhere else is just <coughs> days. So do we go by the definition, or is this something that can't be changed as far as and, business? Well, that's why we're re reviewing it right now. So days means calendar days, unless otherwise indicated. Mm -hmm. But B2 specifically says business days, is yes. what we're saying. Can we use just, I mean, is it practical to use one throughout the whole thing? Yeah, that's what we're trying well, to yeah. get to. In this particular instance, this within five business days after the superintendent's submission is sent, the appellant may submit additional documentation. That is kind of critical, a critical time frame of when to get that to everybody. Uh, because there's even language later on that says after that certain date, after that fifth day, nothing new can be submitted. What's so, the, but the reason we use school days in the complaint policy is because, right, exactly. exactly. So somebody is working, you know, right. to, to so work just, on it. And just to add to that, Dr. Kane, so in our complaints policy, but up until level D, we use school days up until level D because now right. D, right. it goes before the board and we use the same language from before, which is calendar days. But, well, Only there wouldn't be anything wrong with being because we've been waiting. Yeah, I mean, right. We and we were referencing the appeals guide. Because you school, school days. days, you got the calendar, you got school days. They're marked what you're hearing. I do school days for everything. And then if you want to shorten them or make them longer for different things, then you could you could adjust it for business days or calendar days. But school days to me would be more. We chose that because somebody can work on it during a school a day that we're that, in session. That's a good session. point. But we did switch. We left some language because we had not yet finished um, yeah. editing this guide. 
So we wanted the language. So when we have an appeal or a grievance, we want to direct people to a document or a policy, and they need to jive, right? They need to match up. So that's why part of it still says calendar, because this one said calendar. But if we want to change that in this book, then we just go back and we change yeah, the policy right. to match it. Well, that's yeah, regulation. right. So I that think we ought to. I think school days is perfect. Yeah. Then we don't have to talk about Saturdays, holidays. School so days. We, that, we could say 20 school days, which is about a month. It'd be more than a, a five days is a week. School yeah, days, yeah. So that's least. a month. So 20 day, If we went with 20 school days as opposed to 30 days. That would cover it equals out about about a month. That I mean, I like that idea. It could mm -hmm. be consistent throughout on every. And then you always have five or twenty-five days, twenty days, whatever. You know. Yeah, and you're always yeah. In case you have to respond. Because I mean, you also you're dealing time. with teachers and other things that sometimes probably that might not be. You know, it's not like you all are around all the time. It might be somebody. It's not at a school day. Would be 180 days. So what we would be thinking about is, okay, who do we need to talk with? Is there some interviewing mm -hmm. investigation that needs to happen? Will we be able to access them? Um, in the meantime, you know, days are ticking, ticking, ticking. Um, but if you had 30 you know, days so. from this Friday, you're two weeks mm -hmm. gone already. Exactly. Over the holidays, and exactly. you might be around, but the teachers are, you know, exactly. to get a hold of somebody. Mm -hmm. well, I just also think in, in layman's terms, if somebody has filed something on October 17th, they figure they have till November 17th to figure it out. To me, I'm just I'm just trying to simplify. <laughs> Even though there is 31 days in October, I'm just trying to sim I'm just in simplifying it as. I like calendar. I like school days. I do too. Like 20 school days mm -hmm. would be about 30 days. Yeah, school I agree. Days. 20 20 school days would be a minimum of four weeks because you can only do five days in a week if if we ever go. If there's not a holiday in there. And, and, and usually we don't do, I guess we might have four weeks at a time, but I mean, usually that'd be the March. minimum. Do a holiday in there. The question I was going to have for Darren was are, are anywhere in the law does it specify the number of days in any of these sections? It's up to us. That but would influence what, that. The one thing he did say is, is that we need to be able to facilitate this as fast as possible. As you know, the law is you, you want a speedy trial, you want <laughs> a speedy decision made. Um, it needs to be done exponentially. So that's why I like the school days because if school you've days. got five days or ten days, mm -hmm. you 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 got five or ten school days to do it, and we just count them out. But, and Jackie, do you think that would make it easier? Because you know how the issues that keep running into, like they didn't get it in, and then they had it in, and then we were. Well, the only issue that we really had with the last one, <clears throat> where the lady came in and she wanted to extend it past the holiday, remember? So that's. But, if, but you have a, we then we have a, we probably have little school calendars, and you just type off five, ten, yeah. twenty, mm -hmm. and say that's the day it's going to be. And we have the ability to move it either way, you know, earlier or later in the in this, which I like. So that we will have to redefine days, <clears throat> meaning <clears throat> to be <throat> to be mean. School days means school days. Do we um, ever have an appeals over the summer? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Well, that, the only problem we got there is if you have something in June the 10th and you get 20, it would go all the way to, you wouldn't have really, <laughs> then we wouldn't oh, have to act to it until Could September. we not just call it business days? Business <clears throat> days would or we could put something as, in. Or, you, or you could define it and say a day that the district is open. Right, and because we are open over the summer. Well, that's where this is here. In calculating the number of days required to perform an act under these rules, if the day last falls, I mean, so the that would all come out. The only we have problems over the summer. Yes. Yeah, because you can close on Friday. It's really easy for Jackie or whoever to do it five right. days because she can just use the calendar up till. Well, we still put, we put out a district calendar, and it shows on the district calendar that it's four days open. in during the you know month of Ju July, and it shows that. And we could be a little more helpful with the people or whatever happens to say look you know here today's in the summer you got yeah we have a district calendar so and, and that's the and, days and, you're, days. and the central office is leased every week some days all summer oh every, every day, day except yeah. friday okay. the okay. district is closed so you're on a four-day week right mm -hmm. four days. unless it's a holiday so oh, right. july no well, but the 12 month employees are on a four-day week i can tell you as a parent my concern is <clears throat> if i'm appealing i don't want it sitting on someone's desk i know it's not there Right. <clears throat> sure. I want to know somebody's doing something. There's five days of the week. So by doing it by your estimate, changing this within ten days, ten school days, It'd be two weeks. It would be two weeks instead of just ten calendar days. So we're actually giving them 
Right. Extra right. time. Right. Because right. right. you know during the weekend, you're not going to have access right. to the personnel you right. need to. Yeah. Uh, so it's not shortening the time at all. No. So where it says within five business days, we will say within five school days. Yeah, and then when we define school days, we can say days in which Queen Anne's yes, County right. Public Schools is open, you know, for oh, business. That's or a whatever. good. That's a good. And, and so clarify, yeah, that. not the schools, so, but so, uh, public. Correct. The so on here, we're going to do a clarification of days. That, yes. I understand. Everybody and that is, with that? Um, mm -hmm. that is, it's set G. I don't know. It is G. G. Yeah, okay. yeah, G. At the bottom of page five. Well, on the and, paper. If we, and if we have it 30 days now, that'd be 20 days school days and that way give them at least okay. that be minimum that well and then going okay so sticking with that point uh under three initiation of appeals it says within 10 days so it would be within 10 school days giving them two weeks, giving them two weeks. Mm -hmm. within five school days and under uh three b2 there's the word school five. Mm -hmm. Define, yeah, school days. School days. Mm -hmm. Okay. But now, wait a second. When you say school days, you're saying something different. I'm saying define, define, define what it. school days means. In the document. At, right, in the document to say school that days. school days means a day in which the district is open for business. Right. So, right. so whether it, kids are in or not, if yeah. the district is open, it's that will cover it for day. summer. That will cover for days that maybe kids aren't in because we're having parent conferences or what, but mm -hmm. we're open for business, so that day should count. So... The, and taking that in July, when the the board office is only open four days, mm -hmm. they get an extra. They get Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, yeah. and then that they, Monday will be the fifth day. So we're giving them ample extra yeah. time to have these appeals in. And our practice has been that in our constant communication with whoever is appealing, we acknowledge that we've received it, and then we also say, "You'll receive a response by," and we'll count out the days and say. That's by, in here as well. By there August the 15th or before, you should have a response. Which is nice. I mean, yeah, you, you'd have a so, formal day and a drop dead date, but overall they'd have a pretty easy yes. way to figure out, you know, I, I got a week. So, but also, tell them. Yeah. So, but also to, in that vein, to three, three uh, actually four hearings, B, one, written notice of hearings shall be given by the board or designate all interest parties not less than five days prior to the hearing. So five school days. Mm -hmm. Okay. To Ms. Morris, that's point. So that okay. the individual knows it's not going to be sitting on somebody's desk. Mm -hmm. Correct. Eating. We have the timeline. You know what the timeline is, and you should hear something from us in between. And there's no ambiguity about what okay. we expect, or when it's due, when you're going to hear from us. Mm -hmm. So four E one hearings before a hearing examiner. What page are you on? Uh, well, mine says nine. I guess it's a paper page. Is nine. Uh, it's. Four yeah. hearings, no, excuse me, mm -hmm. E, within hearing before days. hearing examiner within <coughs> that body, uh, within 30 days after the production of the transcript. So that'd be 20, 20, 20 school days. Yeah, the okay. school days. Is everyone all right with that? Well, for, yeah, and then, then the, the only days. thing that could do is it could, it could cut them to 28 days. That's the only thing there, but it's not a big deal. Well, again, we're giving them Friday and Saturday. No, but I'm so talking 30 equal. days, four, four, five is five times seven, or sorry, four times seven would be 28, which is fine with me. I mean, I think you're... Would you rather do 28 no, school no, days? No, no, no. 20 school days. 20. Yeah. 20 school days. Okay. It's still yeah, that, that's pretty much a month. It's pretty much a yeah, month. That's four weeks. Yeah. Because, I mean, some people are going to string it out. Some people want to act on it quicker, so you're not going to keep them all happy, probably. Uh... We always get, you know, if, for certain situations. So I, I've just, had a request to do, ex, extend the time. We've always extended uh -huh. the time, you know. So. I only highlighted where the days were because I knew we were having a problem with it. So uh, the next spot where days are located is five decisions and orders. <clears throat> New page number. Uh, is that 10 or 11? Paper page. 11. Number five, Number five 30 six, days. It says 30 days, so we will make that 20, 20 school, 20 school days. days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because 30 days to us depends on when it comes. That could really mess somebody up because you get on a Friday, you've already lost two days to start with. Mm -hmm. There was a spot where Mr. Uh, oh, the next Burns one, appeal that, information form, is that where you are? Mm -hmm. Top of the page, 30 days. 30 days. Okay. 
And Who changed 13, all this? Top of the Somebody page. here. <clears throat> this is right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bet you luck. Uh, what the bottom line is, we're doing five days is a week. You know, right. 20 is 30. Mm -hmm. Right. 10 is five, two, 10 is 10. That's easy. And, that's and I just think that like was that. it. I think that was the only spots I, I, where there I was. I have a question on that last one. Corners, that, corners, that one you just said, Tammy. Pa <coughs> which I'm page? Sorry. I'm sorry. The, at the top the Appeal information form. Under the appeal information form. That's where that last number was. You're still on the 4205 up here. 13, page 13 on the paper. Oh, I see. Thank you. That's one I, I missed. I have a question on that one, though. We keep, that I'm, I'm confused on. It says the notice to appellates, first sentence there, to right to file an appeal within 20 school days mm -hmm. after the decision of the county superintendent. Mm -hmm. So how do we know what day that is? Is that the day when you send the letter out that has a... I mean, what is after the, after the yeah. Made their well, you, you do it formally in a writing this or would, something. Yeah, this would be in the content of the letter. Of the letter, So, okay. right, so I say this is my decision. If <clears throat> you wish to appeal it, you have, <clears throat> you know, from, from, the, school from days. the date of this letter. Correct. Okay, so that's, I just want to make sure we clarify so if you send that. it out on a Thursday, they've got whatever you send on a Monday, they got all that. 20 school days. So we do that. Well, my question is, the problem with some of that is what if, especially like Sellersville, if they don't get the, they don't get it for a few days. Uh, well, we, tend, wonder to, we, we tend to email it and mail it. Oh, you email it. I was going to say we'd certify we copy. Do. do you certify do. copy it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as of the, I would think the and date if we get and, the certified and, copy. And if they came back one day or something, I mean, do we have ability to, I mean, you know, they didn't get it. They say they didn't get it. Then I mean, 20 days, that's a month. Yeah. Damn. And we've not had an issue with them. Haven't. Yeah. We, we email and, it and we certify it. mail. Okay, so, so okay. mail and can we copy there days. if they have representation? So, so it's multiple people getting it. So I'm saying there's a phone number to contact if they oh, have an not, issue. Not can Island. <laughs> you don't take care of your postman. Uh, apparently I don't. So the, I, I'm just saying that we're relying on the postal system to do their job and. Well, like you said, you email it to electronically. We email it so to, and, and it's not just that. So it's going okay. to multiple, multiple people. people. Okay. So it's, it's so yeah, right. It's not just one person. Yes. So it's a. Ch so if I didn't okay. check my email for three days, you know, somebody else did. So, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Because the only thing I was thinking, of, you know, the certified copy when we get that back, the that indicates they received it. That would Correct. be the day that. Okay. Well, we also have the email. Okay. I think that was. I have come from. Uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. I, your, uh, I mean, I didn't catch a couple of them. Thanks, Mrs. Bright. Okay, no, within we ten. Okay, ten school days. Okay. Page fifteen. This is where the appeal information oh, form. Mm -hmm. Okay, ten school days. Now on fourteen. It doesn't. It just says at least one week. Did you want to define and be specific about days? Or just leave <coughs> Where the is one that? Week? Yeah, which, page fourteen, the very last sentence. Oh, I see it at the bottom. Oh, or at least one week in advance of the date. A week is five five days. Would you not rather define that as five school days? Yeah. At least five school days. Mm -hmm. Five school days. Um, the Mrs. Bass, is your That's extension true. still one one eight? Yes. Okay, I just want to check some of these numbers. Um, and there's a spot in here where we have to says put in that Maryland. Maryland um, it says here TDD number. What does that mean? I'll look it up. That's um, the death. 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 Pardon? Death for people who are hearing impaired. Oh, okay. This is 410 758 8213. Is that number still right? We've not changed any yeah, numbers. So. Yeah, so I think you should check that because one of these paragraphs it still has Jim, Jim Jennings in it. Oh, oh, good gravy. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. When you get to that, I'll go with my changes. I'm just going to recommend. <laughs> well, that definitely needs to be. Yeah. There's a, well, is it, is it imperative to have a name, and why don't we just leave Director of Human okay. Resources? Yeah. yeah, that's good. No I'll find the one that has yeah. his name. That no name. Yeah. Yeah, just the, the, the name superintendent. Right. Right. The superintendent is right. whoever yeah. the HR yes. person is, whoever. Yep. No name. Is supposed to be a blank. Because it could, if you're out for a while, it could be you assigned too. It is true. Designate. Or designate. We don't need to change that, the form that, every that, time a person changes. Exactly. Right. exactly. If, you decide, if you're gone for a week and you decide to Greg, then that's just who it's yeah, going to be. It's just, I can't find that now. This is right. This page 25 has James Jennings in it, so we can pull that out. 
for everything through here should just be the title, not the name. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> yes, it does. And like the whole next section, starting page 18, is pretty much a duplicate of. Right. Yes, the front of the, that's what Mr. Yeah. Burns recommended. Just to that's simplify. To simplify it, we have that one section, and then mm -hmm. under each of the different headings, the document that's needed. <coughs> okay. Um, yeah, yeah, to perform page. that appeal. Yeah, it's mentioned okay. twice in that same page. I see that. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Mm -hmm. I guess I never and then that. one week, meaning five school days. Do we want to go with the um, d definition of this, this uh, guide as appeals and hearings? Darren recommended that right in the beginning to change the cover sheet to call it appeals and hearings guide. He sent that over as well. Uh, page 26, again, there's uh, within 10 days, so we need to make, put that as within 10 school days. Like 19 has within five prior to the hearing. Mm hmm Jackie, everywhere there's a, I mean, everywhere there's there's a, a day, number. put yeah. it in the school days. Well, then again, when it says less than five days prior to hearing, then it's five. School days. Days mean... Yes. Um, days that the district, district is, is open. open. Days that the district that, is open. That's the biggest thing we got to mm -hmm. clarify. And that, yeah, mm -hmm. that whole paragraph will be rewritten. And then if it says within 30 days, then we change it to 20. Oh, yes. It is and very redundant. On page 20, I see. Yes. And so because the guide does reference hearings as well, so, I mean, it makes sense to mm -hmm. call it change appeals and hearings. To appeals mm -hmm. and hearings yes, and he has it right here. Recommendation. Mm -hmm. He has the recommendation of that. <clears throat> So everything I see in here is either see all 10 days, 5 days, or 30 days. Mm -hmm. So if it's 5 or 10, it's calendar days. If it's 30, it goes back to 20, that's all. I'm trying to think I I more. On the table of contents, I was going to recommend that where we have Appendix A, Appendix B, Appendix C with the numbers, we just maybe give them a little, give it a title. Like 4-205. Four, four um, yeah, just just next to that, instead of just the number, put the title. Because I was wondering, and basically 4-205 is the Rules of Procedure and Appeals and Hearings. There's some other name for that one. And then the next one is 6-202 six, um, six is Rules of Procedures for Hearings. And then... With 70, 7305, forget what the name, remember Jackie, they have a, another name. I was going to ask Darren if he was here. What the, the difference, you know, what is there a title for that? Is it because it's a kind of mm -hmm. appeal, a kind of hearing? It's page 31, too. Red I just don't Jackie. remember what Here's they're called. Here's a question I got on page so 20. So he can help us with that one, Jackie. Page 28, number 1B. Suspension of a student for more than 10 days. When he gets a suspension for 10 days, that's 10 school days, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. So when we do days, that's not necessarily. It refers back to the definition. Yeah, but our definition is school when the schools are open. But for the suspensions, that's is, different. It, right, okay, they, gotcha. we have a code of conduct and, and all of that. Okay, so. so that, that, I would, you know, it, summer doesn't count. Well, we aren't generally suspending kids over the summer. Um, okay. Yeah. But, I mean, they're school days. But, mm -hmm. so, the school I mean, is days. But everything else we're talking about in this thing is... is uh, days the district, the district is open. open. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does anybody see anything else? Um, somebody better read this more than once. Oh, okay. yeah. I, I, I oh, yeah. Have one. We will be. Now that we're seeing all this. Yeah, I, d I had a question. This is probably for Darren. I thought you would. Um, like the definition of dissent, if a board member disagrees with a majority decision, they may express in writing. My question to him is, when we come down with a decision, it's, it's a board it's decision. It's a board decision. I saw so that. So why do we even have the ability for a board member? The dissent? Dissent, yeah. It's, ma it's majority well, rule because we have to have a forum. Right. A quorum, I'm sorry. And so why would that ever be considered? I was going to bring that up to everybody to get what they thought about that because I saw it and I, I personally don't agree with that. It's Once it's a board decision, no matter what the vote was, it's the board decision. And they, they, they would express their dissent in their vote. 
-hmm. not to the public. Right. Yeah, right. right, but you're saying public. it's already taken care of, so there will be no need to no. write. There's, there's no need to the 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 minutes of taking that anyway. Isn't no, I, I thought maybe to ask Darren if there's something. They do. Rule about hearing, that. There's right. a hearing person there that's, that's, that's taken all of the right. notes. I cannot imagine that there's any legality behind that. Three to one or four to one or whatever it is. So I would, if everyone was good with that, I would definitely like that's true. But they aren't there for the vote. The hearing, the hearing. Uh, what do we, we call it? The stenographer is there, and they're the dictating everything. When we, when we take a vote, then you're in closed session. Yeah, closed and you're session. Doing your but there's no taking closed, closed, closed session for closed session. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that would that would then be take care whatever of. take care of it. Mm -hmm. But if it, okay, if we disagree on the decision on the appeal, mm -hmm. the vote is taken. The majority wins, and it, I'm a dissenter. The way this reads, I am allowed in writing to let the people know how I felt about it. That doesn't seem right. It yeah, doesn't I seem agree. right. No, because somebody could use that later on. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It, now, once you, well, take not only vote, that, once you take a vote, it's a majority of the board. It's a board rule. Board exactly. Decision. It's, it's a board decision, and, whenever, and whether you agree with it or not, it, you, this is what the board has decided. Should explain your side better before. Well, not even that, but I mean, there may not be evidentiary, there may mm -hmm. not be evidence to support what was going on. It, you know, it could just be a I subjective thing. I would anyway, take, like, yeah, I would make say we take it out, but I would ask Darren be sure there's no law that requires us to. Well, will you written dissent? While we're sitting here, will you email him real quick and ask him on that page? Okay. While we're doing this, so. Well, let's wait till we get to the end. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So I'll ask you know what page that. it's on? Yeah, page okay. three. Okay. What which page is it? Page three in the paper copy. It's down at um, right at the very beginning under guidance. Okay. It's the third. De um, definition basically. If there's no legal basis to it, then I have right. no trouble being instru being stricken. Anyone else? Mm -mm. Right. Okay. And the other one I don't understand, and it's probably a question for him. It talks about the next page is final decision. And in the final decision, it says after deliberating and voting on an appeal, the board shall issue a signed brief written order indicating the board vote on the matter and advising that a written decision will be forthcoming. No, and he said he hasn't been doing that. He needs to, but I don't understand that. Because, Which page is that? Um, page four. The next page it says final decision. The last paragraph. So like, why do we have it? to have? So at the at the at the end, let me skip that back to the end. Uh, there, here we go. In the newer, the one with the most current edits. Darren's edits, then? the green, the red, or the green? Yeah, wait a minute, I just had it. <coughs> yeah, it's on page 42, so you guys are 42. usually about two pages back, <laughs> so it might be 39 for you, or Damn. right around in there. I'm on um, page four. <clears throat> it says, you know, like it's giving the, the decision. So it says the Board of Education, Queen Anne's County, met and deliberated by vote of blank to blank. The board upholds or overturns the decision of the superintendent or the superintendent's de designee, a written decision will be issued setting forth the board's findings and conclusions and advising you of further avenues of appeal. Because depending on what it is, they could go to the state board. Mm -hmm. So there's still mm -hmm. another avenue. And they need to know what reason you mm -hmm. made your, hang, hung, what, how you hung your hat so, to make right, sure. Right, exactly. Got, so they're they, looking at to make sure. Correct. That. So, so this thing on page tell. four, I'm on page four where it says, Okay, I, that's a good description of the, the next step. Because here it says that we issue a brief written order indicating the board vote on the matter, which I don't know why we're telling them. Oh, well, basically, yay or nay. Yay or nay. Mm -hmm. And advise that a written decision will be forthcoming. That's, so that's what I just the, read. Right okay, now. so that's the extra so information. Just mm -hmm. Okay. Because they'd need that if they're going to appeal it somewhere else. They're going to try to. If they're okay. going to appeal it on what grounds? Correct. Okay. They've I, taken I, in writing within 30 days of the date of the written decision, so that needs to be changed to 20 school days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Thank you. I, did, I didn't understand mm -hmm. that, that came next. That um, yes. Okay. Okay. I saw that. I'm just looking down here at 41. Okay. On this, on the email, yeah, 41. Yeah. Okay. So, let me see. On the final Okay. Yeah. So well, that's what this is. That, I would just want to know what it. I meant. think it's the same thing. It is. <coughs> I think oh, it's an example of. Okay. I think so. Okay. Then I was going to ask him too on. It's here on page. Paper page twelve, which is. 
provide the space for the number in there. No, there you that go. The That's it. Uh, Thank you for providing that. This is, uh, um, I don't know how to tell you where it is. In that. It's right before the appeal form, appeal information form, which is my 13. You back it up to there. The last last issue is extensions and shorten, shortening of time. I understand we can do all that, but it does say um, we can change it either way. Per, at the very last sentence is providing any notice except those in instances where time is specified by state law. That's the other thing I was going to ask Darren. What is? So he crossed that out. Oh, he did. He crossed out from the ex parte communications, effect on other procedural regulations, and extensions and shortening of time that you just questioned. Well, I on the on the one that we have in the email, it's crossed out. Okay. Ex parte <coughs> communications, I believe in, because that's explained to the board that they cannot have any ex parte communication with any of the appellants. So I'm questioning whether or not it's found someplace else, mm -hmm. so like way right. back in the beginning, yeah, yeah. or maybe you know how there was some redundancy. Page in five. Page five. He's five. just moved it up in green. Oh, okay. Standards of review. Oh, so it's, it's still in there as. Mm -hmm. Okay, part of the contact. Okay. okay. End of five, beginning of six. But extensions and shortening of time, I, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I was just going to ask him where, when that is in the law, where that's in the law that you can't move it's it. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's an option. It's an option for good cause, however. We have to, for good cause, right. say. We have, to, we have to have a reason to okay, do well, it. Okay, here's well, a, here's a perfect example. So we get past five school days, and all of a sudden it's Columbus Day on that Monday, which would would have land on. We could extend it out for them. But we don't have to, well, obviously, with our new school yeah, day yeah, thing. Yeah, I know, but, but, I'm, but or, I, I'm just or, saying, where is it? Or we had, I tell you what, we had a snow natural day. Oh, I was going to say a disaster. We had a snow day. day. Yeah, some weather related. We had a tornado go through Canal and again. Oh, I, I, I agree mean, with on. being able to do that. I'm just wondering where in state law it would say you can't. And so that's what I was going to ask him. Except when time is specified by state law. So mm. I'll just note that to ask him that one too. Okay. Because email that no to him. Law, maybe we, um, yeah, email that to him too. I will. I'll do that. Those too. What's another one I want to ask? Phone numbers. I fixed most of them with the time thing. Presiding officer. This is interesting. I was going to ask him. You. Who page you on? I'm on page 21. Um, paper copy. Duties and authority of presiding officer. That's under rules for procedure 6-202. And my question on that is, it doesn't say in anything in here where council can, you know, do this with you. I mean, is this what the president would be? conducting the whole thing because when we did one of these before we've done one before um the yeah. lawyer did did all the questioning darren did all the questioning wouldn't that well, i guess that can be a, i could that can be addressed you know, who's going to do it yeah that would be and the superintendent can measure out but there was a f funny thing in here how darren had said that the board has no right to subpoena witnesses and expect them uh, our students to attend oh, it's in here that we can't subpoena anyone we don't have that authority so why would we have the authority to swear somebody in wouldn't that be the wouldn't that be the lawyer it says here yeah you should pre pre presiding officer cause shall cause an oath to be administered to all witnesses and around on here. 20 I guess, I guess you're just you know it, it says, but the oath and proceeding, the superintendent may administer okay. oath. Basically, what it's saying is, you probably don't have to have a independent authority. Somebody can just, you know, raise your right hand and say it. I'll see where I can find it for uh, you, Dr. King. Um, Page thirteen, on the electronic. Oh, really? All the way back there? Okay. <laughs> I thought it Page. Duties of the presiding officers. There we go. The title is. I knew it was Thank in there you, somewhere. Michelle. Yeah, right there. Um, have charge of the in charge of the hearing. So the presiding officer, I guess, could be the attorney. Yes. Could be the president. 
Maybe he can. I know what I'm saying is a super tanker can administer oath. I mean, there's there's there there one it, person that said Somewhere that. down there it says the, somewhere in here it says the, it, yeah, it says it can be the president of the board or, yeah, I guess council. So if, I mean, we can leave it the way it is, except the last, uh, next to the last sentence in that paragraph, it should be he or she, or they. It shouldn't leave it to he. He or she. So, um, but other than that, I guess we could leave it like that as long as presiding officers and technically anybody, just, they just become the provided presiding officer. Maybe in there somewhere that it is. It's got to be, um, and I'm just looking at. Okay. So here it is. I see that two, um, two, like three pages back under definitions. It says presiding oh, officer. Two what, it should define a presiding officer. It does. But okay. He may have cut. Oh, here he cut that out. He moved it to it's somewhere K, else. It's K, but presiding officer means board president or the president's or in the president's absence, the vice president. Or such or designated. Moved he moved it out. out. Okay. He moved it out. <clears throat> or in the absence of both a member designated by the president or in the absence of that designation by the board. It's now that means none of you are there to begin with. It's now you page three five, anyway. top of the page in green, D, presiding officer means the board's president. So in there, somewhere in there, we should put or the att board attorney. Well, that's just it. it. This is the board's decision, so it has to be a board member. Uh, okay. Okay. If if we're in an if we're in an evidentiary hearing, right? If I we think have people coming before us, the board president would swear them in, and then they would. I'm trying to find that thing because they give a um, slightly different if it is a hearing, yes. right? Which is slightly different. So he moved this for a reason. Um, I I would I would advise that we leave it like he's got it. What read are we on this? Page is that? What this are you is the second at here? draft. So the first draft was Page May 16, 2018. We so don't now read, this is the yeah. second draft, yeah. as I understand it. We right. don't send it out to the public. Where's this it? is the internal internal it's, work. It's an ongoing it's, document. We have the vote on okay. it. Okay. <laughs> right. We do. We vote on it in the out in pu in the public this session meeting once we agree with all the changes. I just. I, it might be easier to have Darren here to mm -hmm, because he can explain. Yeah. yeah, what the it law says yeah. about it because yeah. it, it is a explain a to all of us, not just one. I think no. he, yeah. he'll be well, here in January, won't he? Yes, but we won't be. If we, I don't know if we'll have time to go over any of the work sessions because we we have them pretty much designated. Well, if we just have our if we if all of us so as members make our individual questions to him real quick, and just. Bam, and just leave 15 yeah. minutes for it. Okay. Or during lunch or whatever we have. Oh. Okay. He, he needs fine. to be here to talk I, about I agree. This. I mean, because we just got this, and it's mm -hmm. like, okay. If we read it, go over it, flag it. Okay. So is that where we want to table it right now? Mm hmm. Yes, um, so I think it at this be. point, we're not making revisions. We're leaving. Oh, yes. We did room. you have something oh, else? We're making we need we're to making pay it. attention. We I didn't to. know if this is right needs to change those days. Oh, yes. Are we the waiting days. until. Yeah. Yeah. At least what we've agreed upon, I think. Yeah, yeah I think we're good on the days. I mean, he's going to have to give it a once over anyway with whatever revisions that are, okay. are made. Um, here's here's a question. Are you okay? Do you understand where he's gone, gone and... Well, I was going to make those revisions that I could. Okay. And then when he comes, if there's additional, he can explain that to me at that And time. then you can disseminate to all of us so we can review it. I can do that electronically if you like. That's... Is everyone all right with that? Okay. I do have one... It's kind of a policy question I was going to ask you and um, Greg about is the very last thing called standard review for the Board of Education and the appeal of extended suspensions and expulsions. That's paper page 39 it's the, almost right before the signature page it says 7-305 and it's the appeal of extended suspensions and expulsions do you find that mm -hmm. the first paragraph talks about rehabilitative efforts to have little or no bearing on the board's role uh, they have little or no bearing on the board's, board's role as an appellate body um, we've got new policies on rehabilitative what do we call there's another word for are you thinking of restorative restorative uh, practices, practices. And that. is that 
<clears throat> we just make sure we look at this, make sure this doesn't counter. So it seems like, I don't know why we'd even have this. How do how does does it differ from our re? Don't we have a policy on re? Um, what I'm thinking is that when they say press. rehabilitative efforts for this, they mean however it is that we have tried to intervene yeah. for a student. That's an administrative thing. What the board would rule on is an appeal to whatever suspension decision, or yeah. decision that an administrator or myself or Mr. P have ma have made. So I don't think that. I think that's what this is referring to. So okay. Okay. If, if we decided that we were going to have a student go through a drug counseling or something like that, the board doesn't rule on that. That's administrative. Right. That's rehabilitative. Okay. The board rules on the appeal. Based on the initial right. incident. Correct. So if a parent is um, appealing the suspension or the uh, recommendation to go to a rise or something like that, that's what you would be doing. You wouldn't say decide whether or not the student should go through the drug treatment mm -hmm. program, the counseling program. Okay, so it's not really contradictory to what we're tr you guys are trying to do. In mm -hmm. our so okay. have you also read in here how if the appellant has found new evidence, they have they we can accept it or not accept it as opposed to time frame and um, whether we find it, it it's I mean it's there's like and I think it's um, it, that may be one of those ones that where may be different depending upon what type of appeal exactly. you're looking at yes mm -hmm. um, so that's where he's that left may, it in that mm -hmm. language and I and I and I don't remember which one it's under I think it's an appeals and hearing seven uh, four dash two oh five I think that's where it is so it's very interesting in which appeal that they're doing, whether we are allowed to accept new evidence, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and the time frame is listed under that, and we can reject it if it's not in within that time frame. It's, I think that's why we need to get this in, well, done if, for if, people. If, if, if they're coming in front of us because they're appealing something Dr. Kane or somebody did, they can't, I mean, new evidence shouldn't, I mean, if, well, that's just if, what if it, she they, hadn't had a chance to look at it, how? Like, they define it in here, whether, okay. yes. Yeah. I mean, whatever is, it is, what it, it is. It should roll back to her before. Right. Well, right. Just, yeah. The only thing we're going to yeah. do is what, what evidence, we're looking at what she saw, not yeah, right. the other stuff, because something could have changed. And right. And and you got to put a time limit on it, because then this could go on forever and yes. ever and yes. ever. I think that's what they're trying, what it's saying. Mm -hmm. The 20 days, get it done. 20 days is a month. 20 days, they get a response back within 10 school days. They have another 20 days. You know, it's... Uh, and, and, and every everything would be named superintendent, HR, executive secretary, whatever. Yeah, position, not the person. Yes. Not the person. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good? Mm -hmm. Would it be smart, instead of putting in this whole document, extension 126 and all that, have that as a front page and we could just do the page different each time? What am that? What now? But like your, Jackie's, your 126, right? Yeah. Well, instead of putting... Secretary 126. Oh. Just put executive secretary or Dr. Kane in case your extension number ever changes. Then we just have it the front page. We don't have to do one page to change all the. I see what you're saying. Instead of putting her, going through the whole thing and change everything. Right. Just put on right. there executive secretary. Oh, sure. You could have the names there too. And then if you want to update it on one page. But the forms you know, are HR would be HR, changed. but it would be <laughs> Mrs. HR. Bass at 125. But letters, somehow you get 126, then you're 126. That would just be an office and not a phone number. Yeah, right. No name, no. And then Jackie's only, or whoever's got one person okay. to, one page well, to look at. Further along on this than we've been ever. Oh, well, yeah. it, it, ha it needs to be done, though. Yeah, oh, it, it really does. does. No, no, I'm saying we're farther along. It's good. It is good. It's it's a good thing. Uh, does anyone else have anything else to mm -hmm. in, get into put into this? So uh, on the next on our agenda, it's just the future meetings and events. We have locked down January 8th as our sc school board meeting, January 15th. It's a work session. January 22nd is a work session. And February is the same way. And February is the same way. The first three, correct? We can click on them. I think we had three in, in February, too, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure we did. February 5, 12, and 19. I'm just pulling up. You want me to read that? Um, 5th, 12th, and 19th of February. Right. In March, we go back oh, to the thank regular. you. Two meetings. <laughs> okay. 5th, 12th, and 19th. And here we have the 26th. We have the 19th. Then. So could we make it the 19th mm -hmm. rather than the 26th? Mm -hmm. Is that all right with everybody? Yes. Mm -hmm. February. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in here it says the 26th. Mm -hmm. So 5th, 12th, and 
19th rather than the 26th. January 8th, 15th, 22nd. I'm looking. Yeah. Get out your book. It's kind of a, a vacay you there. Be better off than not here. Make the final decisions. <gasps> oh. He doesn't want to change the 26. <laughs> so we're, we're doing, we're doing, in February we're doing You know, you just look for 12, 12 and 19. That's what I got. Uh-huh, okay. So and, and 5th, 12th, I, I, 19th? I, I, will, I won't be here the 19th. Okay. On February? I'm, I'm going to Florida on the Saturday and I come back to the Saturday. That's fine. That's fine. Call me. Okay. And call me in the evening around 5 o'clock. I'll give you some really good answers. <laughs> Okay, but for the rest of us, the 12th and the 19th. There are sober ones. <laughs> we could change that. That's uh, right. January 8th, 15th, 22nd. February 5th, 12th, and 19th without Mr. Dick. Mm -hmm. the March is 4th, 11th, and 18th. Are we doing 4 in March, Dale? I'm just, right. I, want to, I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Yeah. Okay. It's March. I've got the 18th. Okay. We have the 4th and the 18th listed. Right. Mm -hmm. If we need the 11th, as it could be a tentative date, if we okay. need it. Okay. Just put it on. I just I would rather have yeah. everybody be on the same page and and utilize our time. If, you know, just write tentative on that one. Right. 11th, yeah. yeah. And, the, and the first Wednesday is the regular meeting. Is the, is the, is the right. Right. regular meeting. And, and the other one's almost at 5 o'clock. Correct. Yes. Got it. I have to add, I have to beg an indulgence, Mr. Paluski, on January eighth, besides being Elvis's birthday, um, the policy committee. We will we, be celebrating that day. We'll be celebrating that day. Yes. Are you January ninth is Nick's birthday. birthday. May eighth. <laughs> um, Jumpers and sideburns. Sorry. Do we have any policies that we really need to go over on that day? I see that we're going to be rescinding some policies that day in the open session. The uh, the only one that we have been working on, because we've been working on the um, ethics, yeah, is uh, Title Nine. But there's not much to work on that that it could be moved if. Did you get them? Can I make an indulgence? There's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. minor revisions to it. Is your suggestion that we just cancel that meeting and we'll move it to the next one? Is that? Mind. That is Elvis's birthday. It is Elvis's birthday. Yeah, but my mother's right. having hip surgery, surgery, and I have to take her. <coughs> That's no problem. That's visits, no problem. Which overlapped. Actually, we there's a board meeting that day too, right? We can, in advance. And yes. then we have our nighttime, which I will be there at the nighttime. It's just during the day. Sure. Her her pre-op visit takes quite a while. Sure. So I apologize. Sign up for I was out of my. No, no problem. We'll okay, reschedule. so we'll move the policy committee. Thank you, sir. And no peanut butter and banana sandwiches that day. I don't know what that means, but that's okay. But Elvis, you know that. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I forgot. It was the last day. And I can't get it out of here anyway. <laughs> out of my phone. I can't get it out of my phone. I'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, Seven fifty-five. Anybody else? Anything good great. in the order? Not. Do I have a motion to? Oh, no. Do we? I was gonna say I move to adjourn the meeting then. And do we, I have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to skedaddle. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy, Happy New Year. Holidays.